In the news, the United Nations has accused Israel of seriously violating international law after it struck a school located within a refugee camp, killing at least 15 people, mostly women and children, as they slept. That word from a report published by The Guardian. The UN Secretary General said the attack, which left 100 more injured, was outrageous and unjustifiable, and demanded accountability and justice. The attack left 17 dead, including a journalist, according to Gaza health officials. On Tuesday, the United States and the European Union announced plans to inflict a new round of sanctions against Moscow. The broader sanctions include limiting access to EU capital markets for Russian state-owned financial institutions, imposing an embargo on arms trade, and reducing Russia's access to sensitive technologies, particularly in the oil sector. In a speech in front of the White House, Obama said the U.S. will block the exports of specific goods and technologies to the Russian energy sector. Albuquerque Police Department is considering scrapping use of its MRAP armored vehicle after opposition from the public and negative press attention that accused the country of turning into a militarized police state. The department acquired the military-style vehicle through the Department of Defense's 1033 program, which allows law enforcement agencies to obtain war vehicles used to hunt insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan. An ACLU report warned that such vehicles are part of militarized policing in which Americans are treated like wartime enemies. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 9 o'clock Central Time. That's CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A Houston-based psychiatrist has been arrested and indicted for charges related to organizing a human trafficking organization. KLTV reports that Riaz Mascuri was arrested by the Gregg County Sheriff's Office and booked under a federal warrant. Mascuri and three other men stand accused of bringing female dancers from India and forcing them to dance for clients 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. The group reportedly ran the operation in New York and other cities between 2008 and 2010. Now, court documents state the men would confiscate the victims' passports and keep them captive in hotels, threatening them with violence if they attempted to escape. Mascuri was released on a $300,000 bond and is scheduled to appear before a judge in a New York City federal court on August 1st. Biotech companies Monsanto, Dow Chemical, DuPont, and others have spent more than $80 million since 2012 towards fighting mandatory labeling of genetically modified foods. That's according to a report issued by the Environmental Working Group on Tuesday. Part of the campaign includes the launch of an interactive website called GMO Answers, a broad effort to win over consumers. Scott Faber, executive director of Just Label It, which supports mandatory GMO food labeling, said the industry is losing. The New York Post has reported that more than 2,500 9-11 first responders have been diagnosed with cancer. New data from Mount Sinai Hospital's World Trade Center Health Program reveals a rise in cancer rates, including 1,655 rescue workers. When combined with firefighters and EMTs with cancer related to 9-11 cleanup, the total comes to 2,000. Thomas the Tank Engine says he's a little uneasy with his broad autistic following, and a couple has a nest egg of debt to make sure they've got some money to owe down the road. This is The Onion Week in Review. Local video editor James Korf told reporters Wednesday that despite having said goodbye over 10 minutes ago, his friend, Michael Woodward, still remained active on Gchat and had shown no signs of leaving. If it were yellow, it would mean that he hasn't been on the computer for a little while, or if it was red, it would mean he doesn't want to talk, but it's green, I can tell, I can see it right there. Korf later said that he felt briefly relieved when Woodward's chat logo turned orange, but was once again dejected when it became green within seconds. And in this week's op-ed pages, a high school guidance counselor laments the fact that no one in his entire damn school has been molested. In other news, a bed bug feels bad for an area man, but a bug's gotta eat. A development exec wants to see what, where, and how that would look, live, and play out. And a man at the gym is just watching TV for more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free here to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Some pretty shocking news about the Tor service has come out. Uh, There's alleged hacking that has gone on. We will tell you more about that here in a little bit. It's pretty fresh news. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Daryl. Also uh, coming up this evening, we get the latest on the Market Basket Saga as it continues where uh, employees of a large grocery chain in the no- northern New England area have been protesting. Uh, they want their CEO reinstated after he was fired, a very, very popular CEO. And now the new CEOs that have taken over have given the employees an ultimatum. We'll give you the latest on that. You can, of course, bring up anything that might happen to be on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we have Skype. You can Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm, so feel free to do that. It's been a busy week for uh, activist stuff here. Daryl, you had a trial. When was it? Was it this week or last week? It's all a blur for me at the moment. Tuesday, and I've been at the county fair. That's why I wasn't on the show last night. I was closing out the uh, Bitcoin outreach booth that we've been doing, so that's been fun today. That's where I've been all day. But uh, Tuesday, you were on trial for kind of an unusual charge. The, the people calling themselves the state here were trying to allege that you are a resident. And they made that allegation not once, but twice. But, Daryl, isn't everybody a resident of some place? That's what governments will claim. Mm, what does that mean? Well, the New Hampshire statutes define residency and they define inhabitant and they define the word domicile and there are conflicting definitions of all of those terms and one could read the statutes in such a way as to say that anyone who spends any time in new hampshire is thus a resident and has to abide by all of the diktats that are set forth that apply to residents But one could also read the statutes and say that, you know, only people who choose to be a resident are residents of New Hampshire. And I have claimed since I've been here that I am an inhabitant. I actually prefer to claim that I am uh, legally transient. And I went and filed some papers today to help further that claim. Hmm of legal transiency. Uh, I have not had a lease since I moved it. Well, with the exception of maybe like a six month period when I briefly had a lease, but you know, a lease is one of the things that a resident has. So I a don't have person, one of those. Would a homeless person be a resident? If a homeless person claimed residency, then yes. Well, that was if a, a question. homeless person did not claim residency, then no. That was a question you asked during your trial, which did not get an answer. Uh, Objection calls for a legal conclusion. Yeah, that's a question I'm really interested in getting answered. And the question is, just to rephrase it, is residency something that can be forced on you or something that you choose for yourself? Right. And based on the wording of at least one of the statutes in New Hampshire... And it's RSA 259 colon 88 for mm-hmm. anyone that wants to, you know, go fact check me on this. It says that a resident or an inhabitant shall be defined in this other RSA, except that any person claiming residency in another state for any purpose is not a resident of New Hampshire. And for the purposes of having a driver's license... I claim residency in Arizona because that's where I have a driver's license. That driver's license expires on my 65th birthday. I intend to keep that driver's license until at least my 65th birthday. Mm -hmm. I might never renew the thing. I might just say, "Eh, screw it, and just keep it for the rest of my life. But for the purposes of driving, I claim Arizona as my residency. Now, I know that um, there's a possibility, at least in Florida, I think is the case, but there's a possibility that there are statutes in Arizona that might contradict the claim. Like if you're not staying the full part of the year or for most of the year in Arizona. Oh, there's a bunch of people that are part year residents of Arizona Mm -hmm. because it's nice there in the wintertime. So people will go from, you know, say Montana to Mm -hmm. Arizona 
and live in Arizona for the wintertime and then go back to Montana once the snow melts. But the New Hampshire people are arguing that you live up here. You don't live in Arizona, and so therefore you're a resident here. Well, I claim to be an inhabitant here, and the statutes allow me to do that. Mm. And basically what it is, the prosecution is upset that the definition of inhabitant does not mean resident. And there have been court cases, one that I cited during my trial, and one that a lot of the conservatives in the state of New Hampshire are not happy about because the New Hampshire Constitution says that inhabitants have the right to vote. And a lot of people want to change that to say that only people who claim residency should be allowed to vote. That's because there's a certain group of folks, many Republicans here in New Hampshire, who don't want college students to vote. Isn't that basically it? That's part of it. And shouldn't college students be able to vote? I mean, if everybody has a right to vote, shouldn't you be able to vote in the place in which you happen to be staying at any given moment? Yes, I would say so. I would think so as well. You can share with us what... The claim by a lot of Republicans in New Hampshire is that people are driving across the border from Massachusetts and voting en masse for Democrats and that people are just driving from town to town, voting multiple times a day and just claiming to live in every town in the state. And that's an absolute absurd claim. There have been eight people that have get been convicted of voter fraud in like the last eight years. Well, there have been stories, and I don't know the veracity of them, but the stories that they, um, you know, certain people in Massachusetts will organize and get on a bus and come up here and go and vote in New Hampshire. I don't know if there's any truth to that claim, but I've heard it. Happens. I think there's more truth to the claim that dead people vote in Chicago. <laughs> So um, it was an interesting trial, and it was actually fairly well attended. I thought you did a great job with it, Daryl. We've got video footage that Derek J. actually has posted up over at freekeen.com. We can come back and talk about some more details here. Chris is on the line in Connecticut, because what is residency anyway? We can talk about that. Uh, Chris, because everybody thinks they're a resident, but do you really know what it means? Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm just tuning in. I haven't really heard the conversation, but so far, so good. Um, I just wanted to call in about the Federal Reserve Kids Camp creepy ad that I heard on National Propaganda Radio about two or three weeks ago at this point. For real? Yeah, that's what I said. For real. It was a pilot beta test program somewhere, complete with school buses picking up the little kids and bringing them to their little summer banker uh, indoctrination camp. Wow, it sounds creepy. So, what do the kids learn at the? uh, What do what do they learn Uh, at the Federal Reserve? What is it they learn at the Federal Reserve camp? Oh well, they learn basics about money and saving. But the scariest punchline of the whole ad was they learn on their bus ride not to to distract the driver in any way because he might crash. Like hint, hint. Don't (laughs) criticize Janet Yellen. Hint, hint. Is this for real? They don't really have a Federal Reserve camp. I heard it on NPR. I'm <laughs> guessing it was for real. I'm surprised nobody else has uh, reported on it yet. And, 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 and was there an actual name for it, or was it just like Camp Fed or something? Federal like? Reserve Kids Camp, and it was okay. a beta program. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. All right, anything else you want to share tonight, Chris? Yes, I signed the Free State Project petition last night. Hey, congrats. Awesome. Congrats. There was actually somebody right. who was up here in uh, Keene the other day from Connecticut, and we we're trying to convince him to uh, make the move up here. What was it that, uh, for you, was kind of the final straw? Well, it was Mark goading me, but I've been 100% committed now for probably a couple of years. But when I first heard about it, I wasn't able to get up there in the five-year window. Now I am, and uh, Mark said, well, go put your money where your mouth is, and I I did that. And is that Mark Edge, Mark Edgington, the uh, yeah, co-host? Yeah, Mr. Edgington. Cool, man. Well, thanks, and we'll look forward to seeing you up here. When are you making the move? Uh, probably a couple years next. i got to keep amassing funds, you know? Right on. Well, uh, save your money. Don't send your kids to the uh, Fed Reserve Kids Camp and uh, put the money <laughs> towards making the move to New Hampshire. Thanks, Chris, for the call tonight. He's talking about the Free State Project, which is the reason why Daryl uh, and I are sitting here together tonight. We were brought here to New Hampshire Thanks to the Free State Project. Not that they paid for our move or anything like that, but it's an idea to bring people who love the ideas of freedom all together to the same geographic area. And that choice was New Hampshire. We'll look forward to seeing you here, Chris. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Take control. 
Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation, easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, Angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we invite you to bring up anything you want. Just dial toll-free here to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. And enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the site. If you like Bitcoin, if you have Bitcoin, you can send Free Talk Live some Bitcoin through our Bitcoin tip jar over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. What's that you say? You don't yet have Bitcoin? Well, go get your free Bitcoin wallet at blockchain.com. And then you can load it up through ExpressCoin. It's the best uh, choice for buying Bitcoins or Dogecoin. Believe it or not, uh, Daryl, I actually have had two people say 
when I asked them about Bitcoin at the county fair, say they wanted Dogecoin. They were interested in Dogecoin. Yeah, I heard one of the guys yeah. say that. I was really surprised by that. So if you want to get Dogecoin, you can do that. Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, they're all available through ExpressCoin. So go there, and you can do it with money order, check, or wire transfer. And they really care about customer service at ExpressCoin. They want to get your needs taken care of. Plus, you can even deposit cash at certain banks, uh, the community uh, credit unions that have what's called shared branching. So go to ExpressCoin.com, and you can download their app for your smartphone as well at ExpressCoin.com. Oh, and by the way, use coupon code FTL if you're ordering less than $40 worth of uh, Bitcoin. You get it for no fee from ExpressCoin if you use code FTL. Again, ExpressCoin.com. We can uh, come back with more tech news with the Tor an uh, anonymity software. Looks like it's in trouble. We will share some of that with you. Plus, you can take control here and bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Daryl, you were on trial on Tuesday in Keene District Court for a couple of charges of Basically, not getting your license changed to New Hampshire because they claim you are a resident. The idea being that there's some law that says that once you become a resident in New Hampshire, you have 10 days or something like that to change over your information. Am I right, right. about that? Uh, that's basically it. But the thing is, I have never declared New Hampshire to be my residency. They are declaring you as a resident in New Hampshire, and that was essentially what they were trying to prove to the judge in the trial by presenting evidence that you have lived here, by presenting evidence that you have run for political office here. Right, and based on the state constitution, which is basically their rule book uh, that they are supposed to follow. Which they don't. It says that inhabitants have the right to vote, and inhabitants have the right to run for office. Right. It doesn't say only residents can vote or only residents can run for office. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be very interesting to see where this goes, because they previously, the very same prosecutor had charged me with similar things yes. uh, last year. And I actually cited that during my closing arguments, Yep. and she tried to give some kind of reason for why she had to drop those charges and the judge said i can't accept testimony during your closing argument so i have to you know disregard the statement that you just made yeah her reason for dropping the charges isn't what i think it actually was because she told me straight to my face that she was dropping the charges the the day of trial basically because she knew she could take me to administrative hearing at the dmv and get me, you know, basically deemed to be a resident by the DMV, and she did, and she right. was successful. That the whole video is online, by the way, on the Free Keen YouTube channel, where you can watch me and uh, Mark Stevens from Adventures in Legal Land uh, come on from Arizona by remote, and he really uh, the, uh, the 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 administrative bureaucrat really gets upset with Mark. It's pretty entertaining uh, viewing, but ultimately they decided that uh, that I was a resident according to their viewpoint and that they were going to go ahead and force me to get a New Hampshire driver's license. Now, what will happen in your case? Who knows? Uh, because your case is a court case, therefore it's reasonable doubt, not preponderance of the evidence as far as the right. burden of proof, whereas mine was preponderance of the evidence. And in this case, the judge, uh, you know, who knows what he'll end up doing on this? He's taken it under advisement. It's Judge right. Burke. And I actually got an update on the case today mm -hmm. where he has given the state two additional weeks to file a response to my motion to dismiss that they had previously responded to three months ago when I filed it. But So he wants another response from them? Right, this? because I guess because I presented additional evidence that uh -huh. okay. you know, there was a court ruling one week ago. Right that I couldn't have presented to them three months ago. So I guess in light of the new evidence mm -hmm. that has been presented, he wants to give them a chance to respond. But what I actually think it is, is he knows that based on their own rules, and if he is to follow the law, he must find me not guilty on the residence charges. Why? Well, their rules say that... If someone claims residency in another place but for you couldn't any claim reason, residency during well, the trial, the you state, didn't testify. The state presented evidence of my residency in another place. True, and they presented your licenses from other states. Uh, additionally, the court ruling from last week contradicts all of the all of the evidence that they have. 
that I'm a resident. Basically, it surrounds the fact that I have voted and that I've run for office. The court ruling out of Stratford County Mm -hmm. says that, you know, based on the state constitution, neither of those things makes one a resident. Hmm. So he has to, he has to say that I'm not guilty. (laughs) I think he's just giving the state additional time to sort of, you know, lessen the impact of how bad it's going to be when they wind up losing. Well, you know, I appreciate your optimism, Daryl. I hope that it, uh, that it works out. I don't know what to expect. I really don't. I think you've got a good argument. And I've got something up my sleeve if he does find me guilty. Are you going to appeal? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's very cool. All right. So we'll, uh, you'll definitely be keeping our listeners up to date on that. But why? Let's ask a, let me ask a bigger question. Why, why not just be a resident? I mean, come on, Daryl. Why are you being such a stick in the mud? Why can't you just go along like everybody else does and establish residency when you move to a place? That's what everyone does. And, you know, people, when they move to a new place, they want to establish residency. That's what people are supposed to want to do, isn't it? I've never wanted to establish in all of my adult life. I have not wanted to establish residency anywhere because with residency comes, you know, quote unquote, obligations. And I don't believe that I am obligated to follow any of those things. So I don't want to claim residency anywhere. What's an obligation a resident would have that somebody who is not a resident would not have? I mean, obviously, when you're in a place, a, a physical location, there are people who will force you to follow their their ordinances and their laws, whether you're a resident or not. So what's one example of uh, why you wouldn't want to be a resident or why? what is a benefit of not being a resident? Uh, one of the obligations and the primary, the largest obligation is the requirement to get a driver's license in yeah. whatever state. And there are things that prevent me from getting a driver's license anywhere mm-hmm. right now. If I were to go anywhere in the country to try to get a new driver's license, I would not be allowed to do so mm-hmm. because I have a warrant in South Carolina. I call it a no trespass order to the entire state so of South Carolina. I mean, you're essentially in no man's land. You, you're screwed, basically. Right. You know, I, I'm in legal no man's land unless I want to shell out several hundred dollars to the state of South Carolina to make this warrant go away. I can't get any new government papers from anywhere. So is resident, and this is the question that I think ultimately would be interesting to, to hear asked at the Supreme Court, you know, is a residency, is residency something that can be forced on you? Is it something you can choose? The law in New Hampshire makes it sound like it's something you choose. Right. But what they did to me in the DMV certainly was not my choice. They forced it upon me and they threatened me uh, with violence if I didn't get their license. More coming up. Free Talk Live. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Phone records, financial and location data, PRISM, Tempora, X-Keyscore, Boundless Informant. Hey, I'll Scott Horton here for offnow.org. Now here's the deal. Due to the Snowden revelations, we have a great opportunity for a short period of time to get some real rollback of the national surveillance state. Now they're already trying to tire us by introducing fake reforms in the Congress. And the courts, they betray their sworn oaths to the Constitution and Bill of Rights again and again and can in no way be trusted to stop the abuses for us. We've got to do it ourselves. How? We nullify it at the state level. It's still not easy, but the Off Now project of the 10th Amendment Center has gotten off to a great start. I mean it. There's real reason to be optimistic here. They've gotten their model legislation introduced all over the place. In state after state, I've lost count, more than a dozen. You're always wondering, yeah, but what can we do? Here's something, something important, something that can work if we do the work. 
Get started cutting off the NSA support in your state. Go to offnow.org. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive there. It's all completely free. And if you need focus, you're feeling fatigued, and you're trying to get that extra edge when it counts, check out Modafinil from ModUp.net. Studies show one in five students are using this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making a difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. Over at modup.net, they make it affordable for everyone to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name. But don't mistake low prices for inferior quality. They care about purity and potency. They'll ensure that it's consistent to that of the branded version. Now, remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. ModUp.net is also a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You pay with Bitcoin, you get a 33% discount. To make the deal better, use the code FTL, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order, whether you pay with Bitcoin or not, over at ModUp.net. Code FTL, it's world-class service. At a great price, that's modup.net for modafinil. Our toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. We're talking about the idea of residency. It's a legal term. Now, I don't have the actual legal definition here in front of me. You know, I could pull up Black's Law Dictionary and we could dig in. But essentially, it, it's a legal term that it, it doesn't mean everybody who lives in a place doesn't have to be a resident. Right. And that's what the people who are uh, part of the state would like you to believe. They want you to want to be a resident. They want you to come into their domain. They want you to jump through their hoops. They want you to pay them some money. They really want you to be part of their system. And there are 50 separate state systems, and they're all a little bit different in the United States. And each one of them has certain requirements. Some have more requirements than others. New Hampshire is probably one of the lighter states as far as residency, uh, things you have to do as a resident, right. obligations that uh, you become obligated to as being as being part of a resident. So, 
for sending having your residency. kids, if you have children, sending your children to a local school, school is one of the requirements. You basically you're putting yourself on their radar, and yes. the government is a criminal gang. It's a criminal enterprise of men and women who many of them are very very nice people, and they don't realize they're part of a criminal enterprise. But I think some of them do know they're part of a criminal er- enterprise. Anyway, it's a group of people forcing their way and their views upon people. And if they know who you are and they know where you live, they're more likely to pick on you. They're more likely to find things to tell you. Oh. Daryl, you you need to do X, Y, and Z because you're a resident here in Florida or Alabama or whatever, you know, fill in the state where you live. Well, why am I obligated to do those things? Why? I can tell you that I don't believe that I am. Even if they in New Hampshire have told me, and Daryl, they haven't made a decision about you yet, but they've told me I'm a resident. The DMV has told me I'm a resident and I had to get their driver's license or men with guns would kidnap me if I tried to drive to the grocery store. Right. So, and actually, what they did with you was slightly different. They had ruled that somehow you had violated the privileges of the road, and they were going to suspend your license. And the only way that you could get it unsuspended was to then go get a New Hampshire driver's license. That's correct. And they claimed that I violated the privileges by not getting their driver's license uh, right. in the first place. Which, again, I don't see what obligation I have to do those things. Only obligation that I know of is there's a man with a gun who's going to put me in a cage if I don't do it. So that's ultimately why I decided to do it after dragging my feet for as long as possible. And I think this is what's the most instructive about what we're talking about here, Daryl. Those who are following our saga of residency here in New Hampshire. And, of course, the best way to follow along is on freekeen.com where we'll post court paperwork and, you know, the real nitty-gritty details of this. But the takeaway is I'm one of the most visible activists in the Keene area. That, uh, there's no doubt about that. Now, whether I like that, like that or not, it's just the truth. And because I'm a visible activist, I am far more likely than, say, you, not you, Daryl, but you, the listener, if you were to make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, and let's say you come from Arizona where you got this 65-year license or whatever it is, it's ridiculously, or it goes to your 65 years 65th old. 65th birthday. You don't want to get rid of that thing. Nobody would want to get rid of a license like that. So what obligation would you have to make that change over? I say none. And the reason I say none is because they, the government people, have no obligation to protect you. They claim that in order, you know, the citizenship idea is that you uh, owe them a duty of allegiance, meaning you do what you're told to do. Right. Uh, you are uh, you you are their liege. Uh, you know, or you're 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 uh, enslaved to them essentially to some extent. I guess not their liege, but they would be your liege. You are their subject. You're, you're their subject, and uh, so uh, they don't have obligation to protect you. There have been plenty of court cases where it's been determined by the Supreme Court of the United States the government has no obligation to protect you. Therefore, we should have no allegiance to them. And they can't prove they have an obligation because all the evidence shows otherwise. But yet they continue to force people into this residency scam. They continue to convince people that it's something desirable, that it's something that you would want to have. And I would like to know from you, the listener, what is it that is desirable about residency? What is it that you want residency for besides the fact that you were taught you need it? Besides the fact that if you ever moved somewhere with mom and dad as a kid, one of the first things a lot of people do when they arrive in a new place is, oh, what do we need to do to establish residency? It just seems like a thing. Right. I mean, you don't do it, Daryl. I don't do it. But some people do. And ultimately, my point earlier was that I never really finished, was that if you move to New Hampshire and you're not a visible activist, then there's not a damn thing they're going to be able to do to really hunt you out or to sniff you out on that. Right. They came after me because I'm fairly uh, well established as an activist. They came after you because somebody snitched you out with some kind of an anonymous tip. An anonymous tip. tip. Yeah. So I don't know who that was, but... Uh, Nor do I, but... It's interesting that it wasn't very long ago that the U.S. Supreme Court actually upheld the right of anonymous tipsters to report uh, road infractions. And when you did ask about it, the uh, police officer said he could not uh, recall. I don't know know if it was an email or a telephone call or a fax or what it was. You were targeted likely because you're an activist as well. Uh, But if you're just somebody, and and the Free State Project, the idea of moving liberty-oriented people all to New Hampshire, 
or as many as possible, to New Hampshire to get active. Many of those folks are kind of behind the scenes, and I, I meet some of these people at the the county fair. It's what I've been doing all most of the week here since Wednesday every day, and you've been out a couple of days as well, helping out quite a bit. But we're talking to average folks who are coming by at the fair, and every now and then you'll come across a couple or a family who they'll say something like, oh, yeah, we moved for the Free State Project, but we don't know anybody, or we don't come out, or you know, we have a family, and we're too busy, and we don't have time to socialize with you folks. And to be fair, we don't have kids. Uh, you and I, Daryl, right. you know, we're single guys, basically. I'm, I'm not single. I've got a girlfriend. But uh, either way, we don't have kids. And so we've got a little bit more time on our hands than some of these folks. But my point being, there's a lot of people out there who aren't on the front lines of the liberty movement. And it is to them that I say, when you move somewhere, to New Hampshire, for instance— don't bother with the whole residency thing. Yeah. Why bother with it? All you have to do is, like, if you have a, um, a license or a registered car in another state, just contact the state and say, yeah, can you send me my registration up here? I'm going to be up here on my birthday. Like in, in Florida, it's around your birthday when they send you the renewal. Different states, different setups. But when you send me the renewal, I'm going to be up here in uh, in New Hampshire. Can you send that to me? Oh, sure. What's your mailing address? Because you can have the address for your residency purposes in that state, right. which is in the state. And then you have a mailing address where they will send you all of your renewal paperwork. And then you just cut them a check every year and they cut you the little sticker you know, that you put on the, the back tag of the car. And as long as when you get pulled over, you don't ask the, answer the cops questions about how long you've lived in Keene, Manchester, or whatever city in New Hampshire, they have no evidence to charge you with not changing over your license. As yeah. I understand it. Share your thoughts. 855 450 free. And, you know, I got away with it for six or seven years. And I'm one of the more visible activists up here. So you can get probably get away with it for even longer. Go to freestateproject.org. We'll continue with more free talk live coming up. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. Just dial toll-free here to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, Still to come here tonight, an update on the Market Basket Controversy. Plus, has Tor been hacked? The anonymizing service on the internet. Are all the sites like the Silk Road and the customers therein vulnerable? We'll find out more about that. The toll-free number here again, 855-450-FREE. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, please become an amplifier today. Just go to amp.freetalklive.com, the AMP program helps us get Free Talk Live on more radio stations. In fact, Daryl, I just paid you a commission this week because you brought on a new station, which is great news. We'll be announcing them at some point in the the near future. Should uh, be announcing them tomorrow. Okay, great. That's a good plan. So I'm a little bit I'm a little bit scattered. I've been at the fair. I don't even know what's going on in the real world. My days are basically uh, 8 a.m., get up, get out there, spend all day at the fair, come back here at 6, maybe snag a shower before the show, do a show, and then do the archives, go to sleep, and get up again and do the fair. So I'm kind of living in uh, in Carney world right now. I'm yeah, not, and you only know what day it is based on the co-host that's in here? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I'm not living at the fairgrounds, uh, although you can actually do that. So I'm I'm not actually living in the Carney uh, structures. They have like these huge trailers where the Carneys live. Have you ever seen those before? I haven't. Uh, when I arrived a couple days ago, they actually thought that I was showing up to park in the camping area because you had the bus. Because I've got the not a bus. Right. And uh, it's it's interesting, uh, you know, the kind of the lifestyle of the Carneys. But that's a whole other issue. Let's go to the phones here. Our toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. Maybe you are a Carney or you've been a Carney. You want to tell some Carney stories? There's always good stories from Carneys out there. Some of them pretty scary though. Let's go to Richie in Merrimack, New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live, Richie. Hey, um, last week you had someone on who was talking about, I guess, Florida uh, psychiatric system. Um, yeah, the ba- I, uh, the Baker Act, as it's called in Florida, it's called different things in other places. Uh, it basically allows people to be involuntarily committed uh, against their will and then held for a certain period of time. Go ahead. Okay, well, I've been involuntarily committed in the state of New Hampshire. Oh, so no, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, uh, I, you guys had some questions for it, so I thought I could explain how the New Hampshire system works a bit. Go for um, it. In New, ha- in New Hampshire, you have three days the be- when you someone will file a petition, they get three days to uh, inform the courts that you're going to be uh, committed, and then you have to have a court date within those three days. Okay. Um, so I got there when I got the sheriff's department brought me in around three o'clock in the morning, and at eight o'clock in the morning, I was meeting with my lawyer and I was in court. So. It sounded it sounded like in Florida they didn't count you didn't even get a lawyer in Hampshire you do. That's um, interesting. And yeah, so and then after so the judge will make make a ruling as to whether or not they have they can prove that you were a danger to yourself or others. If mm-hmm. they can't prove that, then you go home. Um, 
But if the judge rules that you were a danger to yourself or others, you can get up to an additional 14 days. Jeez. Yeah. What and happened to you? The, um, I had the 14 days, and then the um, the doctors actually got a two year commit uh, two year commitment out of it. I didn't stay in the hospital for two years. They released me on what's called a conditional discharge. So they can get up to a five-year commitment out of somebody after those additional 14 days. What does that mean when they got it out of you? Did you did you commit yourself to their treatment? Did they force you to do uh, it? No. I, I was about 14 years old, and I had attempted suicide. And uh, my mother had filed a petition to have me involuntarily committed. Uh-huh. And um, so the sheriff's department went, came down to the emergency room and transported me to Concord State Hospital. Oh, my God. All right. And so then you stayed there for 14 days. And then after that, what was it that, you know, did your parents sign you into this commitment for the two-year period? What? How did you get on that two-year thing? Okay. Uh, the, the doctors had filed another court paper, uh, filed enough, more paperwork with the court to get a two-year commitment. So I was involuntarily, so I ended up staying in for about four months. And then after the four months, they released me on what's called the conditional discharge. And this was from the state hospital, meaning a mental ward run by the state. To me, that sounds like a nightmarish place to live. Um, to be honest with you, the conditions are probably a lot better than prison. I do have to say that. Um, but yeah, there, there a lot of people, there's a lot of people that didn't really need to be in there. I believe um, that. Did they force medicate you yeah. as well, Richie? Um, I didn't, I didn't refuse medication. They can't actually force the medication on you unless you're actually hurting somebody. Um, but no, they, they prescribed me medication. I, I, I didn't refuse it. What happens they if can, you refuse they, it? Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't know because they can only keep you in there as long as you can prove that you're a danger to yourself or other people. Mm -hmm. So if you refuse the medication and you're not doing anything that would cause concern for them to be a danger, I, it, I think it would be a very difficult case for them to force you. Do you think that the people in the state hospital helped you or were you all right and you just had a bad, t a bad time and you kind of dealt with it on your own? Was it actually useful in any way to you? To be honest with you, I had never been suicidal until I was prescribed Prozac. So I, I think it was the medications that actually caused it. Um, you know, it, 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 it's kind of weird. If you've, if you've ever taken some of the antidepressants, no, I mean, not. those are, yeah, it, you start feeling emotions and start, and start having thoughts that you would never you would even dream of having. Huh. So... Were you uh, continued on the Prozac while you were involuntarily committed? No, they uh, they took me off. They put me on another medication called the Fexor. And I've heard um, bad things about that too. Uh, do you do you feel like ultimately that the two years was a complete waste? Uh, I mean, it, what what's your verdict on that? Um, well, I got released on the conditional discharge. A few months later, the Fexor, I started hearing voices when I was on that. Whoa! And. Uh, yeah, and I my conditional discharge got revoked, and I, they had to bring me back in the court again for that, too. But, what is uh, it like when you're hearing voices on Effexor? Are you... Does it sound like it's coming from somewhere in the room, or is it in your head? What is it like when you're hearing voices on Effexor? It's It sounds like it's coming from in your head. I, they're different from the way the psychiatrist explained it to me, that... There's a, if you're hearing voices in your head, that's like better than hearing them outside your head. It's a different type of hallucination, I guess. I see. It's more of a, a narrative sort of thing. What um, what voices? I mean, were they different voices? Were they distinct? Did you hear the same voices multiple times? Um, yeah, it, it's kind of hard to explain to somebody that hasn't really experienced it before. You know the voice that you hear inside your own head when sure. you think? Sure. All right. Imagine that with, an, with a completely separate voice that you have no control over. And that's kind of, or at least that you feel that you have no control over. 
does the voice tell you to do things? What are some of the things the voice is saying? Um, it, a, well, a lot of different things. It, 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 the way it's explained to me is it's kind of like your subconscious. Um, like, I mean, it was telling me my medications were poison and, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. I um, believe it. I believe it on that one, uh, on that count. Yeah. Well, it wasn't telling you to do anything so, violent or uh, or dangerous, was it? No, it was causing me to be me to be extremely paranoid. Oh, paranoid. And, okay. Yeah. So, I the the fear from my mom and the doctors were that the paranoia was going to cause me to defend myself when I wasn't actually defending myself. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you got out, Richie, and thanks for telling us your story tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Man, the experiences people have had, Daryl, I don't know if you know anybody who's done this stuff, the antidepressants like Richie was talking about there. Uh, hearing voices, people go on murder sprees when they're on this stuff. I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's effects I, or I've which ones it is. I've heard a lot of stories about that. When I was younger, my dad was on some kind of medication for narcolepsy and depression, and it basically turned him into like a human zombie. To what where does that mean? What is a human zombie? He had no emotions. Right. No, he had no emotions. Oh, wow. And he just, he did not look like he was a person, if that makes any sense. Like, the life was just taken out of his face. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Well, that sounds like it'll get you right out of a depression. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. You can bring up anything that you want. Tell us about your experience with some of these antidepressant drugs. If you'd like to share your story, this is Free Talk Live. Take control next when leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch solid pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for 49 cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 1st, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.38 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,286 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $591. 
Antiwar.com reports, after long-standing denials, the CIA has finally admitted that its personnel improperly accessed computers belonging to the Senate Intelligence Committee to spy on the details of a report they were compiling on the CIA's use of torture. Improperly accessed in the case means illegally hacked, and Senator Dianne Feinstein from California dubbed the spying a violation of the understanding the committee had with the CIA as well as a violation of constitutional separation of powers. CIA Director John Brennan, who publicly denied that any such spying took place as recently as March, has now issued an apology to the committee for misleading them on the issue. The Justice Department, as always, is shrugging off the news of executive branch power abuse, insisting they would not conduct any criminal investigation over the matter. The White House likewise dismissed the story, praising Brennan for his instrumental role in the global war on terror. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, also from California, refused used to publicly criticize the CIA for spying on Congress for fear of retaliation, noting, they really come after you if you talk about them in public, adding, there is a price to pay. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The Wall Street Journal reports Israel and Hamas agreed to a three-day ceasefire in the Gaza conflict with the hope of forging a more lasting peace. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon announced the truce set to begin this morning in a joint statement issued in New Delhi. A spokesman for Hamas confirmed that all militant factions in the Palestinian territory had agreed to suspend violence. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office also confirmed the agreement. Israel, Hamas, and other Palestinian factions are traveling to Cairo for negotiations aimed at building the ceasefire into a more lasting truce. During the pause, Israel will not remove its forces from Gaza. The truce will be used to deliver urgently needed humanitarian supplies to Gaza residents and allow for the burial of those killed and to tend to the wounded. Other aid agencies will work to repair water and energy infrastructure that has been damaged or destroyed. Kerry told reporters, this is not a time for congratulations and joy or anything except a serious determination, a focus by everybody to try to figure out the road ahead. Both sides have voiced openness to a durable ceasefire, but international mediators have made little progress trying to bridge the gap between the two. Hamas is demanding an immediate end to the economic blockade of Gaza by Israel and Egypt. Israel wants all Palestinian militant groups disarmed and Gaza demilitarized. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports, the on-again, off-again attempts by ISIS to seize the Kurdish city of Ain al-Arab continued yesterday, with fighters attacking the town, sparking a battle that left at least 49 dead. According to reports, 14 Kurdish YPG fighters and 35 ISIS fighters were slain in the fighting, with dozens of others wounded on both sides. Ain al-Arab is considered a valuable prize because it lies partially within Turkey and partially within Syria. That spanning of borders has been a big help for the YPG as they have been able to recruit a number of Turkish Kurds to join the defense of territory that could eventually be part of an independent Kurdistan. The Syrian Kurds have a solid foothold in the northeast of the country, but Ain al-Arab and the rest of their Aleppo territory are separated from that by ISIS holdings in Raqqa. ISIS has been keen to expand into territory on both sides of the Raqqa province as well as in Iraq, though so far the Kurds have proven to be one of the few factions that can effectively fight them all. Off. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After years of weekly meetings with his psychologist, local man Chris Vaughn told reporters today he was excited to only have two sessions left before completely resolving all of his emotional issues and never having the need to return to another therapy session again. When I started therapy, I knew if I could make it through exactly 120 50 minute sessions with Dr. Warner, then all of my issues with depression and crippling anxiety would be gone. Next week, we're covering my parents. 
The week after that, we're wrapping up my trust issues and then I should be good to go. According to Vaughn, it took 40 sessions alone to fully resolve his feelings of inadequacy and low self-esteem resulting from an unhappy childhood. Vaughn's therapist, Dr. Susan Warner, told Onion reporters that she's pleased with her patient's progress and relieved that his longtime emotional and cognitive issues are nearly solved for good. I told him that getting healthy would take at least 100 hours of therapy, and now he'll never have to see me again. Thank God for that. That guy was a real piece of work. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you are invited to bring up anything you want. Just dial on in toll free here to me, Ian. And Daryl. And our number is 855-450-FREE. Daryl's here courtesy of his website, fpp.cc. What will be found when people visit there, Daryl? People will find daily news, weekly commentary, all sorts of books can be purchased from there. There's also a free newspaper that people can download. I actually need to put the August issue of the paper on the site. Sweet. I was out dropping copies of that around downtown Keene earlier today. Oh, so will that be available at the, the county fair then? The That's paper. been available at the county fair. Yeah, I haven't even looked at the date on it. We've been giving out papers. Uh, one of the activists this morning, David, was handing them out left and right to folks, which was great. So it's a great activism tool, and it's available on the streets here in Keene. So you can come on up. You can also order a subscription to the paper, right? Yeah, uh, subscriptions, either 10 or $12 a year. And, and you'll then mail I them to mail anywhere? It to you. Uh, in the U.S.? Yeah, I'd mail it to Canada. Okay, it's a because, little more though, right, for Canada? Uh, postage is about the same going to Canada, huh. but once you start going overseas, then gotcha. you wind up uh, getting into expensive territory. So go to fpp.cc. You'll get a whole lot more of Daryl there. Let's go to your phone calls and thoughts here as we launch into the second hour of this program. You can, of course, take control of the airwaves. Coming up, an update on the market basket controversy we've been covering here to some detail on Free Talk Live, what is the latest? There's been an ultimatum issued. We'll let you know which side has issued the ultimatum and to whom and when the deadline is here in a little bit. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Blake. He's in California. Blake, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Daryl. Hey, how's it going, guys? Great. Go ahead with your thoughts, so, Blake. Um, I just had a, I just watched Derek Jay's Victim of Crime Spree. All right, me, congrats. And, uh, and um, I like, like, the message and, like, I, well, I like the activism and everything. I was just curious. It just seemed like, I mean, like, in, in particular, like, the hat, the guy who wore the hat in court that he was against. Like, are, is, you know, if Derek or you guys could share the same particular views, are you against the court system or you just think that what, like, the, the specific rules like the hat in general are wrong? Like, are you against the rule of law? Or are you? I was just curious about that. Well, I can't speak for Derek J. Obviously, I'm Ian Freeman, the producer of the movie, so I'll speak for myself on this. But um, yeah, I think the rule of law is a joke. I think what we have here is rule of men. We have, in the case of the courts, men and women who wear robes, who have men with guns, who will do basically anything that they're told. And you see, in Derek J.'s victimless crime spree, one of the scenes is Judge Burke having Adamo Freeman from CopBlock.org arrested for following him peacefully up a, a flank of stairs or a flight of stairs uh, to the second floor of a two-story building and then arresting him basically for asking questions while recording video. It was all caught on video. They ultimately dropped the charges. But just the fact that a man who wears a robe can order these uh, bailiffs to make a move like that, which was clearly an illegal thing to do, just shows the raw power that some of these men have in these courts. And I think that the system's a mess. It's a monopoly, one-size-fits-all system. I don't think that's ever a good thing to have, is to have a monopoly. So I'd like to see some decentralization of justice. I'd like to see arbitrators rather than a one-size-fits-all government court system. But if we are going to have a government court system, I think that it would be better if it focused on crimes with real victims. And uh, right now, anytime you go, whether it's there in Thousand Oaks, California, where you are, or here in Keene, New Hampshire, if you go into an arraignment, you're going to see person after person coming in there for no criminal activity whatsoever. You know, underage drinking, possession of marijuana, driving to work. 
these are some of the things that are very, very common to see in arraignments around here and all across the country. And it's a tragedy, personally. I think it's a, it's a horrifying thing that people are having their lives ruined. They're having thousands of dollars extracted from you. You sit in an arraignment for two hours. You'll watch probably a couple dozen cases, a few dozen cases flow through there. And each one of them ring in the cash register every time, taking a plea deal and then doling out hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in fines to the state. I mean, these guys are raking it in. It's a money-making operation and it doesn't do anything. Thing to bring justice to the world unless every now and then they actually deal with a real criminal which now and then they do and that's my opinion right. daryl what do you think I, I, I am not opposed per se to the rule of law what i am opposed to is the arbitrary implication or the arbitrary uh the arbitrary nature in which the laws are applied and well, the I, law itself says, Daryl, the number one rule of the district court is that the rules can be thrown out at any time in the interest of justice. Yeah, and so that is, that's completely arbitrary. Yeah. And, of course, you know that right there I don't agree with. But the law of don't harm anyone else unless they harm you, you know, that to me is a law. You, know, you can't have this plant. That's an arbitrary diktat. So if the actual laws were to be applied equally across the board to everyone, then maybe I would have some respect for it. But I, I forget. I think it's Mark that often says we are a nation of laws uh, arbitrarily enforced and poorly written. So, Blake, there you go. Two answers for you. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. I just think uh, that one quote where they say if, if, if men were angels, I mean, we're a nation of men, so there's going to be inadequacies and there's going to be things, injustices happen that are horrible and those should be fought. I mean, the war on drugs is a joke, but is it possible that there that, that court system is just wrong? And there's, you know, there's others, of course, too, but would you say the majority is a joke or they're just a few bad apples? I mean, I was in court. I got arrested from a police officer for not showing my ID at a party in college, and I went to court and fought that. And the judge agreed with me. The police, the police officer came to the to the court, and uh, the judge actually sided with me and dropped the case. So, I think that overall, it's a good thing. Like, it, I don't know. Overall, there's going to be a few bad apples here and there, but I just don't know if we should go back to the wild. Wild West or everyone when you say a few bad them. apples, are you saying that you think there are a few bad courts, or you're asking if there are a few bad courts, or I'm I'm, real, I'm not real clear on that. Well, the statement yeah, is a sure. few bad apples spoils the bunch. That's true. So if there's a few that are bad, then it's going to make the rest of them bad as well. So we should scrap the whole court system and start over. Well, no, as I said, if you're going to have a one-size-fits-all government monopoly court system, let's just have them deal with real crimes with real victims. Like you, underage drinking, not a real crime, not a victim. Uh, you shouldn't have been there. You shouldn't have been given that ticket in the first place. And uh, the, unfortunately, the courts are dealing with that all over the place. It's not just a few courts that are screwing people up, uh, screwing people's lives over. That's what courts do. Go to any courthouse and sit in on an arraignment and just watch the human tragedy show. And it's all brought on by the police and this awful, awful system that we have. And the court system's part of it. It's not a good system at all. It's not focused on justice. It's not focused on making victims whole in a lot of cases. It's only focused on punishment. And it's only focused on extracting money from the weak and the poor. And uh, it's a sick system. It really is. So, you know, again, I don't I don't like the idea of keeping it around, but if we're going to keep it around, let's focus it on just the criminals who've hurt people. But ideally, this is the best situation, in my opinion, is multiple arbitrators from which people who have disputes can choose. But that's a long conversation to have, and what I'd recommend you do if you want to learn more about that is check out The Market for Liberty. It's a great book written in the 1970s by Morris and Linda Tannehill. And you can actually download it for free in audiobook form as well as other forms over at Book dot free talk live or books dot free talk live dot com that'll take you uh, to a page with that book and several others on it the market for liberty does a great job of explaining how it is that we could have competition within the court system if competition makes things better and i believe it does then why shouldn't we have competition within the court system why shouldn't there be competition for the best justice system I, I agree with that. I just want to clarify. Thanks for the hey, call. Hey, thanks, Blake. Thanks for watching Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. How many stars would you give it out of five? 
Yeah, I'd probably give it a four out of five. Thanks. I really appreciate that. And you can always rate it while you uh, surf on Amazon. Of course, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree is on Amazon in the director's cut. You can go check that out there and uh, grab the DVD of it for, I think, less than 10 bucks. It's loaded up with uh, almost eight hours of bonus footage. There are two commentary tracks on the movies. It's definitely the best way to watch it. Uh, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, the DVD isn't in HD, but some of the old footage that we use isn't in HD either, so it really doesn't matter that much. Again, victimlesscrimespree.com. You can go watch it for free online, order it anytime through Amazon, and the links are there at victimlesscrimespree.com. There's more coming up here. You can take control of Free Talk Live. Crashed, the death of the dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, walk I'm with comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Excuse hey, me. hey, hey, hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no. now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. (laughs) 
This is Free Talk Live. You may bring up anything that you want. Just dial in toll free. Is Tor hacked? Is it over? The whole privacy on the internet thing? Was it an illusion in the first place? We'll find out more about that. It's pretty disturbing news. The toll free number tonight is 855 450 free. That's 855 855- 4503733 plus Daryl has the latest in the market basket saga with the North uh, New England grocer in a em- embroiled in a huge fight uh, between the board of directors and basically everyone else in the company uh, who've been rallying behind except for the two new CEOs. Yeah, well, the, right, the board of directors, the two CEOs. Uh, the uh, the rest of the company has been rallying behind the former CEO that was ousted, and now the two new CEOs have issued. An ultimatum. We'll give you more details about that because the clock is allegedly ticking. We'll continue with your calls here and thoughts. Let's go to Skype, where Aaron's on the line in Pennsylvania. Hello, Aaron. Hey, Ian. How are you? Hey, Daryl's here too. Go ahead. Um, you guys were talking a little bit ago about um, forced medication. Yes, go for it. And and uh, I had an experience with that, I guess, as a child. And when I was in second grade, I was diagnosed with ADHD and put on a Ritalin regimen and uh, was on it for a lot of my life until oh, wow. in college, actually, the, uh, I spoke to a psychiatrist because I was having so much trouble with it. And uh, he diagnosed me as a, have, acquiring a bipolar disorder hmm. because the Ritalin would cause me to go in cycles. Anyway, the... Uh, So then I have an eight-year-old son now who was experiencing trouble in school where they tried to push this on to him. And uh, we wouldn't wouldn't have anything to do with it. And it got to the point where the school actually wanted to send somebody to our house to investigate. Whoa. Yeah, they actually asked permission if they could send a uh, child services worker of some kind over to find out. And you said what? Fortunately, I was a Free Talk Live listener at that point. I had just found this show like six months earlier, and I said no. I said, uh, I said, well, we're going to handle this. Uh, we have someone. I made up a story, I guess, like we're going to have them see so and so, and and uh, they let it go. And then we moved in the next six months after that to another out of state. Crazy. But, but they will, they will push this stuff and. I think it's and really my, scary, man. I mean, were your parents sorry for putting you on that stuff back in the day? My mom and my dad were on opposite ends about it, and today, now today they both apologize. Hmm. Um, in college, I actually started to abuse it slightly because I would, it would cause me to lack sleep. And then when I was sleep-deprived, I would crash. Hmm. And usually it was about finals time that I would crash. And the one time I spe- abused it, I guess I would say, and I had, uh, I guess that they call dissociative personality disorder, where my brain split into like four people. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> now, when that happens, were you aware of it? Uh, who I was became less certain. So there was four people with four separate names, different handwriting, different speech, um, And I would argue with myself, like you kind of think things over normally by yourself when you have your wits about you. But this was like a fight in my head. And there was James, Harold, Nora, and Aaron, and they were, they were just at each other trying to decide everything. And it was a democracy. (laughs) So. (laughs) No, this was when you were uh, sleep deprived or wait, wait, when was this happening to you? So I had reached the end of one of my cycles of being sleep deprived, and then I overdosed on Ritalin, taking about four times the normal amount, mm. and uh, trying to stay awake to study for finals. And How many day. hours have you go- had you gone without being asleep at that point? Oh shoot, I'd probably, I'd probably done a thirty-six hour stretch, and then I had like passed out, I think, for two to four hours, and then mm-hmm. over the course of the week, maybe I had accumulated six hours during a week. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you're going to start hearing voices. You're going to start uh, split personalities. It yeah. makes total sense to me. I mean, I've never been crazier than when I was, was sleep deprived. It was the most profound insanity uh, that I, could, I can't even describe. Oh, yeah. How long were you awake? Uh, for a, f- a few days. I mean, it started to go real bad probably like three or four days uh, into it. So, yeah, I can see that being without six hours of sleep for an entire week would be very, very taxing. 
That's scary yeah. stuff, man. How did you uh, get out of it? You just went to sleep and then, you know, things were okay or what happened? No, actually, um, once I stopped, so once I stopped taking it or well, once I stopped overdosing, I started getting semi-regular sleep again. Mm-hmm. I didn't really recover for a couple of weeks or maybe a month until like I really just stopped taking the Ritalin altogether. Once I fell back to a normal sleeping pattern for a couple of weeks, they kind of faded away. It was. Uh, do you still have? Do you still have uh, visits with the voices? Have they come back at any point? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually, I actually decided at that point that I was never going to take Ritalin again. And, yeah. And uh, actually, that's when my life completely came back together. Wow. After about six months, I got into graduate school. My grades shot up to all A's and B's, a three point seven GPA. I got a master's and a full time job. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Aaron. Thanks for sharing your story tonight. It's been great. I appreciate hearing from you. And, and again, thanks for doing that. Toll free number is 855 450 free. Who is it that needs outdoor survival training? Well, turns out it's anybody who works, plays, or travels in the great outdoors. Why bother taking a survival course? Because if anything happens at all when you're outdoors, to yourself or a partner, a loved one, it can be hours or even days before rescuers can reach you, which means it's up to you to handle it. Did you know that the most common outdoor survival situation is the lost or injured day hiker? These courses that are being offered by CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com have been garnering rave reviews. Ron Albacher, the Director of Counseling and Psychological Services at the Vaden Health Center, Stanford University, says, quote, The hands-on approach in which you share your extensive knowledge and background in survival techniques works for participants on every level. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and empowering our team. Right now, uh, they're signing folks up for an August 10th event in Talkeetna, Alaska, where you can build a log cabin from scratch with a small group while learning to sustainably homestead. They've got pocket knife only field training in Alaska, wilderness first aid, map and compass skills, courses for all ages, custom and private training. These guys are the experts at making you the experts. Beware of copycat sites with similar names. You need to go to California Survival Training.com. And uh, be sure you check out the details there. It is the school of the internationally renowned instructor Thomas Coyne. That's CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. Their number, 805-503-8861. That's 805-503-8861. So there's a lot to talk about here still on the docket, so to speak, for tonight. Uh, whether it's crazy experiences with prescription drugs like that last just horrifying uh, story about being on Ritalin and splitting into four personalities and then finally getting off the Ritalin, basically cold turkey, and having your life be actually good. Your life gets put together after that. And, man, it's it's so scary how many kids they're pushing that stuff on. You want to share your experience? We're here for you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Plenty of time for your calls and thoughts. The latest on the Market Basket Saga still on the way. Plus, is Tor vulnerable? Has it been hacked? We'll find out more on that coming up on Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. 
The easiest thing in the world for a reader to do is to stop reading, according to the late, great Barney Kilgore, who became managing editor of the Wall Street Journal in 1941 and grew the paper circulation from 33,000 to 1 million by the 60s. And he'd be pleased to know that his paper is one of the few that people now pay to read online. Someone else pre-internet who realized that attention is fragile? Motown Records founder Barry Gordy. In the early 60s, when his label dominated the charts, he'd bring a dozen real people into the Hitsville, USA studios and audition songs. And he'd ask, if you were down to your last dollar, would you spend it on this record or would you buy a sandwich? Today, attention span seems like an oxymoron. For tips on cutting through the clutter, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. You're privileged to drive the road. You must follow the law. No, I don't have to. So you're going to make a, you're going to double park and you're going to make a left hand turn in front of a cop? Can I respond to you here, Barbara? Do right ahead. I'm not going to run a red light in front of a cop because he has a gun and is willing to hurt me, but I've run plenty no, of. Wrong. Wrong. He's not going to hurt you. He's going to give you a ticket. Oh, but if I decide not to pull over, what will he do? Well, that you're not obeying the law. Barbara, I don't obey arbitrary words written down by strangers. I well, obey that's... natural law, Barbara. That means if I do something, I expect consequences will come from that, sometimes right. good, you sometimes bad. You run a red bad. light, somebody comes around, and you kill them. You're not, I would never you're run not a red light like that. that. When I run a red light, I stop first, look around, make sure no one is uh, is, oh, is in danger, free. and then oh, I go you, through. Oh, you are such a phony. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN. FM. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in and talk about anything, whether it's an experience with crazy prescription narcotics making you insane, as our last caller shared with us, or whatever happens to be on your mind. I don't know what that noise is. Some sort of thing playing in the background of a web browser. Sorry about that. Uh, you can bring up anything here. That is the point of the show. We also have Skype. You can Skype in. The username is lrn.fm. With you in studio tonight, in here. And Daryl. And, of course, we'll continue here. Uh, your calls again. We'll take them about anything. Tor, under attack. The story from International Business Times. Core members of the Tor Project, the free online service that aims to cloak Internet users in anonymity, have admitted it's been compromised. Now, this is disturbing news, especially, what has it been, two months since the folks who made TrueCrypt, which has for the longest time been sort of the go-to, hey, need encryption? Use TrueCrypt, kind of the go-to thing. And it was supposed to be this open source thing that, I guess even though it's open source, wasn't ever audited to any extent. And as I understand it, there is an audit currently going on of that particular code. But a couple months ago, the creators of that software, TrueCrypt, said that they came out with this really bizarre message saying that their software was compromised and that you should use Microsoft's encryption software, which doesn't make a damn bit of sense. Why would anybody from an independent uh, encryption software group 
encourage someone to use Microsoft software. I mean, if you want to use compromised software, go ahead and use Microsoft's encryption software. I can't imagine there wouldn't be an NSA backdoor in Microsoft software. So the I was listening to Ernest Hancock on Declare yeah. Your Independence this morning in between making phone calls, mm -hmm. and he was talking about this. On LRN.FM. On his show, and he was saying that, you know, from everything that he's read, the people that use encryption go to the front of the line for NSA surveillance, and that huh. Tor was never about encryption, that Tor was something that we know that it was created by, I think it was the U.S. Navy. Yeah. So Tor was all about, you know, making it's people It's supposedly about think, hiding, not encryption, right? Right, but making people think that they're able to somehow encrypt their browsing and hide mm -hmm. from everything, but essentially putting them on you know the front steps of the NSA. That sounds like paranoia, though, uh, Daryl. I mean, because on the Tor system, the anonymized system, or what was supposed to be an anonymized system, uh, there's all kinds of crazy stuff on there. I mean, you've got the Silk Road where people can go and they can buy fake IDs. They can buy drugs of all sorts. There's all kinds of, you know, questionable things available through the Tor system. And yet it took them two years to take down Silk Road. I mean, if it was indeed truly a cracked system from the get-go... Why take so long? Wait, just waiting until you know business built up. If so, why not take down some of the other players, the major drug dealers on the Silk Road? I mean, are, is it really that compromised? I can't tell you why the government does anything that they do, or why it takes them so long to do what they That's do. That's true. It does take but them a while. We do know for a fact that a lot of the supposed homegrown terrorists in the U.S have in fact been recruited by the FBI, given supplies from the FBI, yeah. and told, here, drive this van into you know, the center of Portland, Oregon, or wherever it is, and then whenever the thing is getting ready to go off, which most of the time it's not a real bomb, the FBI shows up, arrests the guy, and says, aren't you glad we were here to stop this guy from detonating this bomb we gave him? Sure, I'm with you there, but what's that have to do with Tor, the anonymizing system? I'm confused. Well, what it has to do is that it just shows that we know that they set things up so yes. that they can arrest people. I see, I see what you're so saying there. So with Tor, they could be, and I'm not saying that this is what's going on, but based on things that I've heard... It seems as though it's something that they set up for the expressed purpose of trying to bust people for doing shady things that they knew were going to happen on this, you know, supposed dark web section of the internet. It was started in 2002. I mean, for a for a plot to bust a bunch of people, they sure are taking their sweet time. I mean, it's been more than a decade now. So, maybe I don't they're know. not finding what they thought they were going to find. I, I guess I see what you're saying. But, I mean, if people want to plan violence on tour, they could certainly do that, too. There's all kinds of things because people believed they were anonymous that uh, they might have been doing there. So let's continue with the story here from International Business Times at IBTimes.com. The announcement comes only a week after the hacker community was shaken by a word that a scheduled presentation in which researchers would prove that it's possible to find tour users was mysteriously canceled. Tor, which stands for the Onion Router implying multiple layers of security for users, said in a blog post on Wednesday that users who operated or accessed hidden services, that's what it's called on Tor, when you go to a website that is on Tor, this Onion Router, it's a hidden service. And the reason why it's called that is because it's hidden from the normal web. When you get an Onion address, like the one for the Silk Road, uh, and I'll find the Silk Road address, we'll post it for you over on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter page so you can see what one of these looks like. But it's mostly a jumble of numbers and letters. Sometimes you can see a readable word in there or two. But uh, it's mostly something you can't remember. You have to copy it down somewhere because it's just so strange. Anyway, they're hidden services. You can't access them from the regular web. You have to have the Tor anonymizing system. Or, again, what was believed to be an anonymizing system. The story here says that uh, Tor announced on their website that users who operated or accessed hidden services from January 30th through July 4th of this year which I presume is a lot of people, 
should assume their identity has been compromised. The anonymity network, which is accessible via a browser plugin, is used by activists, criminals, and hackers wishing to avoid the gaze of government monitors or targeted advertising, made up by a network of volunteers who redirect an individual's internet connection. Tor can be used to provide uncensored internet in unfree countries, as well as to make a murder-for-hire plot possible. Spokesman for Tor told the IB Times, quote, From what we found during our investigation, the attackers seemed to target people who operate or access Tor hidden services. By running a number of relays in the Tor network and modifying the traffic these relays sent, the attackers attempted to learn about some Tor users visiting hidden services. Unfortunately, it is still unclear how much information the attackers were able to learn. The Tor spokesman refused to speculate on who the guilty party might be, but a growing swell of online speculation is pointing the finger squarely at researchers affiliated with CERT, C-E-R-T, the division of Carnegie, Me Carnegie Mellon Software Engineering Institute in Pittsburgh. In February of this year, CERT researchers requested and were later authorized to deliver a presentation at the Black Hat Cybersecurity Conference in Las Vegas promising to reveal a security vulnerability in Tor that rendered users susceptible to identification. The Tor group, learning of the scheduled presentation, asked the researchers to turn over their evidence, though CERT would only hand over a small amount of information. An abstract of the research was also posted on Black Hat Conference's website. Using the fragment of information provided by CERT, Tor discovered on July 4th that an attack had been going on since shortly before CERT asked to deliver the presentation. Three weeks later, on July th uh, 21st, CERT's presentation was canceled, with Black Hat releasing a statement saying that only that the materials that the presenters would be speaking about have not yet been approved for public release. The most recent update observers have is Wednesday's announcement from Tor, which provided a more detailed explanation of the attack and security update that aimed to address the vulnerability in question. So, purportedly, this has been patched, perhaps, because... Again, it's only through July 4th that they say that there have been issues here. CERT issued a firm no comment for the story, but Wednesday's post from Tor has drawn more attention than the usual deep web drama, with experts like Ed Felton, a professor of computer science and public affairs, calling for an explanation. He wrote on Freedom to Tinker, Princeton's blog uh, for the IT Policy Center, said, quote, this story raises some serious question of research ethics. I'm hard-pressed to think of previous examples where legitimate researchers carried out a large-scale attack lasting for months that aimed to undermine the security of real users. What does this all mean? Is Tor still vulnerable? What does it even mean? I mean, can you even trust anything anymore? Can you trust TrueCrypt, Tor? Both of these services have announced that they're basically useless within the last couple of months or at least highly possible that they've been uh, compromised. Your thoughts are welcome. Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Question, could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. 
or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a mm-hmm. license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, you know? Is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town of Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to see, think per- of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. We're talking about the Internet and some of the anonymizing, uh, the the most popular anonymizing software. There is other stuff out there, as I understand it. Uh, one's called Freenet, I believe. Another I2P, IP2. I'm not really sure what the other one is. There's a few different ones out there. Tor, probably the most renowned. Uh, Silk Road, of course, one of the most infamous sites on Tor, but it's only one of many. Uh, and there, have, of course, been re- news releases within the last year about certain sites on Tor being taken down. Uh, Tor hosts being attacked. Freedom hosting, I think, was one of them. And there have been some big questions about how were these services located? What was the, the method that the FBI used to determine the location of the server for Silk Road? How did they get to the, sil- the server and copy it? How did that happen? That was never answered in the FBI's indictment against Ross Ulbricht, the man who's alleged to be uh, to have been running the Silk Road. By the way, you can go to freeross.org and uh, contribute to Ross Ulbricht's defense campaign. But how did they find out how to go and actually get physical copies of that machine? Very disturbing. And maybe it has something to do with the vulnerability that now has been announced from the folks over at Tor. Yeah, I was doing some web searches trying to find something, you know, sort of validating the claims that I heard and repeated. And I found articles all the way back to October of last year about the vulnerability of Tor. Hmm. And what? now I, I've not clicked on all of those links, but just knowing that. This has been reported on for, what, maybe nine months now? That maybe this has been going on a lot longer than we think it has. By the way, I want to let you know about my magic mud. I've got a jar of it up in the LRN.FM restroom here. It is an amazing product, and it actually does what it claims to do. It's a holistic remedy for your teeth that removes plaque and detoxifies the mouth of bacteria, 
that cause cavities. The product gives you a dentist clean every time you use it and is gentle on the enamel. The ingredients in My Magic Mud are also used as dietary supplements. So not only is this an effective whitener, it's safe to swallow. You really will see results from My Magic Mud the first time you use it. That was uh, Mark's experience. That was my experience. Uh, there's, uh, It's not uncommon for this to be the case. It's an amazing product. It's a teeth whitening powder that strengthens your teeth and promotes healthy gums, reverses sensitivity issues, and soothes any pain that you might be dealing with. It was created, uh, My Magic Mud was made by Jessica Armand. She's a liberty-oriented, homeschooling mother of three. And uh, go to MyMagicMud.com to get a jar for yourself today. Or give it as a gift. This is this will be a really, I think, amazing gift. It's also a lot of fun to use it. It makes your mouth all black and silly looking. So if you have kids, they'll probably really enjoy it. I've heard that, uh, you know, it's described the way you use it. Remember when we were at probably in elementary school, they would mm-hmm. give you that red dye thing to chew on. No, I don't that, remember that. that. There would be some dentist come to the school for, you know, like your health class, and they'd give you some little red chewable thing, and you'd chew on it, what would you and do then it that? would show you the plaque that was on your oh. teeth, and yeah, so I do then you would that, know, vaguely. you know, like, oh, these are the spots I didn't brush good enough. Mm. I've heard it described like that, as far as, you know, the sort of funness of using it no it's way more fun i mean it's like uh you've got black mouth when you're using this thing your whole mouth is this black stuff it's cool it's really a lot of fun anyway go and get a jar from mymagicmud.com of course it rinses right off and it's very clean then your mouth is even whiter uh, after using this and and again it doesn't white in a fake way it's not like some sort of chemical burn Uh, it actually whitens your teeth to their natural whiteness so it does some great stuff. MyMagicMud.com. There's also an interview with biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole there where he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. Again, that's MyMagicMud.com. Habu is on the line in Madison, Wisconsin. We've been talking about Tor, the purported anonymizing system on uh, the Internet that may be compromised. Uh, Habu, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, even though I'm uh, calling from one of the smart cities in in America, uh, um, I, I know very little of uh, uh, of this tour thing, but mm-hmm. here are my suspicions, and, and uh, they're just visceral, nothing uh, educated. I suspect that any organization like Tor that is uh, th- th- that um, helps uh, facilitate these kinds of um, you know communications, um, those people, or at least one of those people, is probably compromised there, meaning. Um, the government has a bead on them. They are probably uh, doing this in exchange for a lesser sentence or whatever, or maybe even blackmail. So I think it would be prudent to assume, and even if, if we have a group of people meeting, which might be considered subversive, uh, assume that there's one or two people there who are taking notes and yes. sending them on. No, I totally agree. I think that's the safest thing to do. That's why I really loved what the folks over at nhfree.com did They uh, and, and still would do, is they would plan all of their activism openly, just openly on a public internet forum, just plan, the whole, plan it all there, because why bother trying to keep it secret if you've already been infiltrated? And and you kind of have to act as though you are, otherwise you, you'll just end up being paranoid about who the feds are and trying to keep secrets from everybody, and that's not a that's not a path I want to go down. Yeah, but, you know, let me – may I also talk about something else that is probably on the back pages, but, you know, it's people like you who make uh, just ordinary citizens aware. There was this uh, recent case in um, in, in New York Supreme Court – New York uh, State – Federal Court uh, about Argentina defaulting on its debt. That's all we heard in the news, but we didn't hear the background, and really the background was – is that these vulture funds, you know, these people or funds, hedge funds who go and buy the distressed debt, not the original debt. The original debt goes to bondholders, and then they, uh, you know, when when a, com- uh, a, a country cannot pay it, then, you know, it goes into distressed mode, which means they get 20%, 30%, 40% on the dollar. Mm-hmm. But that debt is available on secondary markets. You know, it can be – it's still advertised the bond value keeps going down. And then there are these hedge funds who buy these this distressed bond at pennies on the dollars, two or three cents on the dollar. And then they're still holders of that debt, so to speak. And and then what they do is – now, Argentina uh, agreed to to pay, uh, the you know, the major uh, – 
bondholders, and these people were major bondholders. They were only 15 percent, but uh, they kind of held out. They wanted to be paid the full amount, the full face value, even though they got this on pennies on the dollar. Hmm. But anyway, listen, I don't want to go on and on, but this is the main point. This uh, 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 federal uh, 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 judge uh, uh, um, found or ruled against Argentina and said they had to make a, 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 you know, pay up. This was appealed to the Supreme Court, which did not hear it and let it stay. So this becomes law now. They had to pay and, what? And, and the full amount? Is, yeah, the full amount to these <laughs> distressed, to, the, to, to these vulture funds. <laughs> You know, so, so wow, so, you know, what a you know, sweet this is, deal. This is my point. Just one minute more. Uh, this is the point that the the courts, including the Supreme Court, are making uh, decisions which become effectively law without Congress even opining on it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And of course, government bureaucrats have the ability to do that with a lot of things, just creating law, creating yeah, regulations. Please. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, please, you know, Google this matter because it's the, 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 there are so many levels to it that it's so scary. And, and what do you want people, people want to Google? Bring... The Argentina thing, or what exactly? Yeah, yeah, the the, the whole decision. It, it it it's it's written in pretty lay language, but it tells how uh, uh, this is a way for the federal government to bring these other countries who do not tow the uh, the American. Uh, I, I don't mean American people, but American establishment line. And, and kind of like beat them with a cudgel over the head with these decisions. Habu, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, we continue with your calls and your thoughts. Let's go to Christian in North Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Christian. Hey, guys. Hey, I'm, hey. Um, you know, whenever I hear news like this tour business, I always wonder who benefits from that news, right? News comes out, tour is dangerous, you know, don't use it, you know, you might, you know, be spied upon. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think the NSA benefit from this one. How's that? Right? Well, because now people are afraid to use tour. So all the various, you know, reasons that people were, were, were trusting tour before, now they're all like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't use this, this tool, you know, mm-hmm. what other tools are there? Maybe there's nothing else that does what tour used to do. And essentially, if I was the NSA, this would be probably the most you know, expedient way to reduce tour traffic and discourage the use of a tool like this. Are you discouraged, Christian? I am not discouraged. Why? I've been using tour for years, and I'm going to keep on using it, along with a VPN. Okay, but but I mean the the story here is that this may be compromised. That they're you know may, they may have been able to identify identities of Tor users over a period of several months. I mean, that sounds kind of scary. If you want to comment further, you're certainly welcome to do so. I'm not sure. You know, I'd like to know why you are so confident uh, in this. We'll come back with more here. The toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. Hour number three is on the way. Plus the latest on the market basket saga. Daryl has that story, and you can bring up anything. Free talk live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,295. Silver opened at $20.66. And Bitcoin is trading around $574. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound. CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com. Or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, the United Nations has accused Israel of seriously violating international law after it struck a school located within a refugee camp, killing at least 15 people, mostly women and children, as they slept. That word from a report published by The Guardian. The UN Secretary General said the attack, which left 100 more injured, was outrageous and unjustifiable, and demanded accountability and justice. The attack left 17 dead, including a journalist, according to Gaza health officials. On Tuesday, the United States and the European Union announced plans to inflict a new round of sanctions against Moscow. The broader sanctions include limiting access to EU capital markets for Russian state-owned financial institutions, imposing an embargo on arms trade, and reducing Russia's access to sensitive technologies, particularly in the oil sector. In a speech in front of the White House, Obama said the U.S. will block the exports of specific goods and technologies to the Russian energy sector. Albuquerque Police Department is considering scrapping use of its MRAP armored vehicle after opposition from the public and negative press attention that accused the country of turning into a militarized police state. The department acquired the military-style vehicle through the Department of Defense's 1033 program which allows law enforcement agencies to obtain war vehicles used to hunt insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan. An ACLU report warned that such vehicles are part of militarized policing in which Americans are treated like wartime enemies. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 9 o'clock Central Time. That's CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A Houston-based psychiatrist has been arrested and indicted for charges related to organizing a human trafficking organization. KLTV reports that Riaz Mascuri was arrested by the Gregg County Sheriff's Office and booked under a federal warrant. Mascuri and three other men stand accused of bringing female dancers from India and forcing them to dance for clients 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. The group reportedly ran the operation in New York and other cities between 2008 and 2010. Now, court documents state the men would confiscate the victims' passports and keep them captive in hotels, threatening them with violence if they attempted to escape. Mascuri was released on a $300,000 bond and is scheduled to appear before a judge in a New York City federal court on August 1st. Biotech companies Monsanto, Dow Chemical, DuPont, and others have spent more than $80 million since 2012 towards fighting mandatory labeling of genetically modified foods. That's according to a report issued by the Environmental Working Group on Tuesday. Part of the campaign includes the launch of an interactive website called GMO Answers, a broad effort to win over consumers. Scott Faber, executive director of Just Label It, which supports mandatory GMO food labeling, said the industry is losing. The New York Post has reported that more than 2,500 9-11 first responders have been diagnosed with cancer. New data from Mount Sinai Hospital's World Trade Center Health Program reveals a rise in cancer rates 
including 1,655 rescue workers. When combined with firefighters and EMTs with cancer related to 9-11 cleanup, the total comes to 2,518. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 1370 AM on Sundays at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. When 16-year-old Jeffrey Patterson died in a car accident in February, he didn't just leave behind grieving friends and family, he also left a significant web presence. In a tribute to their son, Jeff's parents have continued to update their son's blogs and social media sites, including a blog called Shitbirds, Shitbirds Everywhere. Well, Jeff used his blog to make fun of stupid shitbirds. Yeah. And now that we're doing this, it's like part of him is still alive. Yeah. And then when I post a picture of some shitbird who has a stupid ankle tattoo or wears some retarded hat, I feel like somewhere he's smiling. He hated retarded hats so much. Whenever we get a comment calling Jeff a dumb fag for making fun of a handicapped person on a rascal scooter, well, it's like he's still here. <laughs> uh, Jeff would have gotten such a kick out of that fat shit bird. He really would have. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want by dialing in toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the website. We, we give them for free. Those other talk show hosts, they want to charge you 7 8 bucks a month. We do it free. Get all the features there. And it's probably more stuff you get for free than you'll pay for on those other websites. So go and check it out for yourself. Free Talk Live. Dot com. We continue here. Uh, we lost Christian there during the break. He basically said he had said what he wanted to say. Uh, I talked to him on Skype during the break there a little bit. Anyway, just to bring you up to speed if you're just tuning in, the Tor anonymizing system on the internet is alleged to have been hacked. There apparently was a group called CERT, which was, uh, let's see, I'll find out what that stands for again here in a moment. But anyway, CERT is a group with Carnegie Mellon Software Engineering Institute. They were going to be giving a presentation at the Black Hat Conference, which is kind of like a hacker conference, a uh, security conference. And they were going to reveal a security vulnerability in Tor, but have mysteriously canceled the presentation after they turned over some of the information about what they were going to reveal to the Tor folks. Tor uh, re essentially came out with a notice saying they'd been hacked and that people using the system between January 30th and July 4th should assume their identity had been compromised. Now, it's it's not known yet how much the attackers were able to learn about the users of the Tor system during that period of time or the users maybe it was only maybe it wasn't everybody on the system, maybe it was only people on certain nodes of Tor. Uh, we don't know the details there, but it's certainly pause for uh, for concern, I think, and people need to pay attention and maybe figure out what's going on here and Try to do a little bit of research before they continue on in this. Tor is an important software. It's an important piece of software. It has allowed people around the world to communicate in ways that previously had believed to have been safe. And that has resulted, as was pointed out in this article, uh, you know, in some good things happening. Yeah, sure, people will point out that there's uh, fake IDs and terrible pornography and, uh, you know, drugs on Tor, but there are also... You know, there's also you can the, find those things in pretty much any neighborhood of any city across the country. Well, true. And the, uh, the other point about Tor is it can be used to allow people who don't have Internet access to access the Internet or have restricted Internet access. It can be uh, a tool for activists to communicate with one another without being concerned about having third parties uh, monitoring it. So. Anyway, there, it, I think it behooves us to look a little deeper into the story here. So we continue from the International Business Times, and they're interviewing, uh, let's see, this is a guy from Princeton University, or yeah, Princeton Center for Information Technology Policy 
blog saying there's some serious research ethics questions going on here with this cert firm essentially hacking this network or that's the that's the allegation it's not confirmed they did it he says it's in itself is ethically problematic at least the waters even get darker when we consider the data that the researchers might have gathered data that would undermine the security of tor users did the researchers gather and keep that data with whom have they shared it if they still have it what are they doing to protect it no, I mean, it's a good thing that things get hacked because then you find out the vulnerabilities and those things can be patched. And I imagine that's what Tor's position is, is that they are patching the vulnerabilities and or have already done so. No one seems to know, and those who do are keeping their lips sealed. But there are other, no less pertinent questions. The number of Tor users skyrocketed following last year's revelations from Edward Snowden, which showed the U.S. National Security Agency is conducting daily indiscriminate surveillance on Americans and international residents alike. With that sudden influx, though, came increased scrutiny. First, in July, the FBI acknowledged that it subverted control of Tor and launched a mass malware attack to find the proprietor of a despicable child pornography ring. Then, just a few months later, the FBI was again able to infiltrate the supposedly ironclad network to identify and arrest the alleged owner of the Silk Road, a shadowy online bazaar that made it possible to find everything from an illegal firearm to drugs to child pornography. Complicating the matter even further is Tor's admission that the U.S. government provided more than $1.8 million in funding in 2013 alone. That's a shocker. The Tor development team is getting money from the federal government. All the while, the NSA and the British GCHQ intelligence services reportedly sought to infiltrate the network. This news might be alarming to internet anarchists and tech-first libertarians, but Tor, in fact, began as a U.S. military project. Now, that much I, I was aware of. Uh, with the goal of shielding intelligence agents conducting espionage in the aforementioned totalitarian regimes. Quote, a branch of the U.S. Navy uses Tor for open source intelligence gathering, and one of its teams used Tor while deploying in the Middle East recently, unquote, reads the Tor fine print as highlighted by Pando Daily. Quote, law enforcement uses Tor for visiting or surveilling websites without leaving government IP addresses in their web logs and for security during sting operations. But ultimately what Tor was, it was this government creation that sort of became this open source project as I understood it. And so, yeah, it can protect government agents from scrutiny in the same way that it supposedly could protect you and I from scrutiny. And that's sort of what the, you know, the, perp the original purpose of Tor was subverted for. It was used as a government spook tool initially and became an anonym uh, anonymity tool for everyone to use. Whether the government's support will be enough to convince Tor users to continue trusting the network or dump it entirely remains to be seen. And, uh, and it also remains to be seen, you know, how many people are going to continue to trust this thing. What about you? What's your plan with Tor? Are, are you a Tor user? Were you a Tor user? Did you decide that it's, uh, you know, this is bad, this is like the worst of possible bad news and, you know, that you're going to bail on Tor? And if so, do you have another option planned? I've used Tor a couple of times. And with my most recent upgrade to a newer version of Linux... And there's been some upgrades to the Tor software to where Vidalia, which is the browser or the router that you need to access the Tor browser, mm -hmm. no longer comes installed when you download the browser. Okay. And there's some kind of bug with Vidalia where it's not working properly with the newer versions of Linux. So I've not been able to use Tor wow. for so a couple of months. It's bro broken. Tor is broken for some users. Yeah. And yeah, what do you want for free? Yeah, and right? Brian Sovereign, who's one of the Sunday co-hosts, he's also a tech guy. And he's been doing a lot of research on his own to try and figure this out. Not just for me, but you know, there's a lot of people that use Linux and would like to use Tor. And they can't because, you know, the two things aren't compatible with recent upgrades. So for those of you who really like the tech side of this, uh, I'll go ahead and link the official Tor Project blog 
they get into heavy, heavy technical detail. Oh, about, I'm sure they do. Know, what it was that they found. So for those of you that are interested in that, I, I like the IB Times piece because it's a nice general overview of some of the questions with Tor, you know, the big questions about, you know, government financing, what was the history of it? Is it actually com uh, compromised? We'd love to get your thoughts. You're welcome to share them. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So I was out at the uh, the county fair today again, Daryl, doing another full day of uh, kind of carny work. And actually, somebody called in earlier. They wanted to talk about carnies, but they dropped Were off the line. Were you doing the carnival barking? Not a lot, a whole lot. I did a little bit. You were doing some of that yesterday, and it was very funny. Yeah, I, I was actually doing it sounding like a carny oh, intentionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it was very, very funny, although I don't know if everybody was amused. I don't know what the other vendors were thinking about it. There were several of them that were laughing. Okay, good, good, good. So we were having fun there yesterday and uh, giving out lots of Bitcoin information to people. Chris Cantwell was there helping out uh, today and yesterday. He did a great job. You can check out a picture of it over at freekeen.com. But it's it's always a lot of fun to bring the ideas of freedom out into public and just let them let them lay out there and and see what people have to say about it. You know, what are the critiques? Some politician came by uh, the booth today. And, you know, when politicians uh, come to visit a booth full of radical, uh, voluntarist, uh, anarchist, libertarian types, uh, things are going to get a little bit interesting. Josie Wales, the outlaw, uh, was at the booth today helping out as well. Uh, looks like she's planning uh, to make a move out this way. So we're having fun with her and... This politician, this slimy guy comes up. I can tell you more about that here in a moment. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Talk about your experience with TOR, outreach projects for the Liberty Movement, or whatever's on your mind. Coming up, the latest on the Market Basket Saga as well, here on Free Talk Live. When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch solid pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for 49 cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Hi, everyone. Everyone, I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Attention. Have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously 
seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. And Daryl. And inviting you to our website at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features that we have there for you. They're completely free. we got a webcam and more. Go to cam.freetalklive.com to do that. Now, Free Talk Live's uh, phone lines are brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about privacy... And what we're talking about right now online is really all about that. Uh, you got to take steps to ensure your privacy. And ProXPN can help you with that. They have servers around the world that you can access. It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data so that people who would like to snoop on you can no longer do it. Your internet service providers probably logging every website you visit, every search term you enter. And they're maybe keeping those logs for as long as fi- uh, five years. So you can actually put a stop to that by going to proxpn.com slash FTL and downloading their software. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, Android as well. proxpn.com slash FTL. Grab the software and get started. You can upgrade to their premium account and get it for just 5 bucks a month with our discount code FTL20. That gets you 20% off the price of the premium account where you get unlimited bandwidth, those servers around the world, the ability to privately torrent and get ba- uh, get past regionally blocked websites. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL20 for that 20% off. Break the price down to $5 a month if you buy the annual plan. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose but more of your privacy. So... Get some more of it by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. They don't keep records of your online surfing habits at all. I was talking about the uh, the outreach booth that we had today. Uh, Daryl, you weren't there today, but you've been there the last couple of days. Right. And uh, you'll be coming out tomorrow. It's a lot of fun to just go out and, and talk to people, which for me is is nice, considering normally, uh, you know, I sit in an office. You're a recluse. That's not you make, true. Th- you make telephone calls but otherwise, you are pretty much a recluse. That's you, not true at all. I'm, I'm frequently going out and doing activist. You'll go sorts out for activist stuff. Yeah. But as far as just like going out to walk around downtown, you don't do that. Oh, I don't know. I bike around sometimes. Yeah, that's that's not true, Daryl. I do go out, but you don't get the chance to really interact with people if you're just walking around downtown. Besides saying hello to some folks or maybe stopping and talking to somebody you know. But the nice thing about uh, the fair is you get to talk to all kinds of people you don't know. Right. And, yeah, you'll see some people you know, too, which is nice. But uh, you get to talk to strangers, uh, people who you've maybe never interacted with before. And And sometimes if you have have a bad short-term memory, you meet people that you've already met before. It's true. As happened to me yesterday, I, I forgot that I had met... A friend's neighbor a couple of months ago, or actually about a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. and he stopped by the booth and he was like, I know you. And I was like, I have no clue who you are. <laughs> so it was fun today, uh, as always, reaching out to people. We had great weather and handed out probably well over 100 uh, Bitcoin flyers. In fact, some folks just got back from the 
uh, from the outreach booth running the nighttime shift. Did you guys run out of the Bitcoin flyers? You did? You didn't? Okay, good. Because we were darn close to running out today. In fact, I'm going to have to do a, a print job at the local Staples just to kind of keep it going. What we've got, we've got actually a Bitcoin vending machine uh, that we've been trying to pitch to people now. I've used it twice. <laughs> You probably used it more than anyone, actually, at the the county fair. Only one person thus far, I believe, has actually purchased something. Who's one person who's not you, Daryl, has purchased something from the vending machine, and it was one and of the other. And then you vendors. put a dollar on somebody's wallet for them. That's true. Yeah, I donated a dollar to somebody just to incentivize them to actually sign up for the the blockchain wallet. And um, so, you know, that hasn't been, that's like the holy grail. I mean, to, to find somebody who will go through the process of listening about Bitcoin, being interested in Bitcoin, grabbing a wallet, installing the wallet on their phone, and then finally getting Bitcoin. I mean, this is a pretty intricate process. It's not, I don't expect many people to be willing to do it. The main goal of the booth is to simply introduce people to the idea of Bitcoin. And I think at that We've been successful. If we yes. can get people to sign up for Bitcoin wallets as well, that's an extra level of success. And we've we've done that with, I would say at this point, probably at least five people. And then uh, of those five, one of them uh, has purchased their own Bitcoin on their own volition from our Bitcoin vending machine, which is, uh, I think it's been pretty cool. It's been a fun kind of different style of outreach. It, it is, of course, interesting to, you know, encounter the, you know, the different responses from people. And of course, we're in the middle of the woods here. Keene, New Hampshire is in the southwest uh, corner of New Hampshire. It's like this oasis of liberalism in, you know, Cheshire County, New Hampshire. And and even though it's liberal in Keene, it's not even like the same kind of liberal you might be thinking of. It's still kind of a backwoodsy sort of liberal. There's a lot of people in Keene, New Hampshire who uh, we just got electricity about 15 years ago. They where don't I like live. they don't like the Internet. They, uh, they, they they don't want it. They have no interest in it. So there's a lot of folks walking around who are just like, what? Internet? I don't do I don't have internet. Yeah, we don't do internet. So, but of the people who do internet, they do seem to be interested, many of them, in Bitcoin. Some have heard about it. They don't want to hear more. Maybe they've heard it's for the black market or who knows what it is that they've heard, or it's a libertarian thing and they don't like libertarians. But, but the uh, funny thing is, based on the surveys that I've seen, what is it? It's only like 30 some odd percent of people that use Bitcoin describe themselves as libertarian that doesn't surprise me i mean it's right, not a but, libertarian thing right that that's the point is you know the libertarians are a minority of bitcoin users there's probably more bitcoin users who are libertarian than libertarians in the average population that would be my guess true um, but that said it is not an inherently libertarian thing and that's why i was really excited when there's like a local uh, vegetarian kind of roach coach that comes to this particular county fair and during the rest of the summer is located physically at a location in Keene, they're thinking about taking Bitcoin. They seem very, very interested and excited. Now, by when it. you say roach coach, you're talking about like a mobile food vendor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear on that, but yes. Yeah, yeah, you're the up. only person that I've ever heard that term from. Really? So I'm guessing a lot of our listeners probably have All no right. clue what you were talking about. Well, thank you for uh, for helping me clarify that. So I, I always mentioned there was going to be this politician, right? So this politician yes. comes by. He's a Republican. He's running against the Scott Brown character. Was it Bob Smith? No. Okay. Uh, was some of the uh, one of the other uh, Jim somebody I think. Rubens, Jim Rubens. 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 So I don't know, who the, you know, I don't know who the guy is, but he was like, "I'm, I'm endorsed by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance," and uh, talking about how, you know, he's supposedly so liberty oriented. He actually bought a copy of Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. I'll give him a cop, uh, you know, I give him good. credit for that. But then he ended up telling us that he doesn't think open borders are a good idea, and of course, you know, it's me. The outlaw Josie Wales and Chris Cantwell at the booth, and this guy wants to talk about immigration uh, with us. So, you know, of course, I pointed out that I, you know, I basically think that people should be free to cross borders freely, and you know, and we had a, a brief discussion. But I'm not there to try to convince some sort of politician to change his mind about these right. things. I don't think that's even possible. And at one point, I noticed that all three of us were actually paying attention to him. And I thought, oh, I don't want to be doing this anymore. You know, I, I want to talk to regular people and reach out to them. So that's the thing yeah. with, a, with an outreach booth is you don't want to get sidetracked by the talky people. And, right. you know, there's people who will come there that want to chit chat with you about all kind of different issues. And I'm sorry, I'm not there to debate. I'll answer your questions about Bitcoin, but I don't want to debate immigration policy. I want to talk to people and get information into people's hands. And if I'm being monopolized by somebody, even this politician... 
uh, who, you know, again, to his credit, he did buy a copy of Derek J's victimless crime spree. So maybe he is good on some things. I don't know, but he's definitely wrong on the, uh, the he's no Gardner issue. Goldsmith. Yeah, we'll come back uh, with more here in moments. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. I told him that I couldn't vote for him anyway because I'm running in the Democratic primary against uh, Maggie Hassan, which is the governor of uh, New Hampshire. <laughs> You got a laugh out of that. This is Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Do good people ever want to call an attorney just to find out if they're right or wrong? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what are you forced to think about first? Money. If you could call as often as you wanted and talk as long as you need without a bill, would you call? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, Please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free 
Free Talk Live. Bring up anything right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Daryl. Hey, join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy all all the features that we share with you. So I was talking about, uh, you know, how today I've been doing Bitcoin outreach at the local county fair and what we've been promoting to people as far as the best wallet to have for Bitcoin. Of course, blockchain.info. Go there. Actually, you can go to blockchain.com now, and it makes it so easy to download their app for iPhone. It's back, by the way. The blockchain app is back in the iPhone store, and it is available. In fact, I was told that people with the old app, it's automatically updating to the new app. Which is exciting. Although so to- all of those people shot up their iPhones for nothing. No, I think they shot them up for good reason. I mean, screw Apple. Apple screwed people over on Bitcoin, and so the hell with them. Apple screwed people over on things other than Bitcoin. Well, this was the last straw for some, for a lot of people who'd had it, and they uh, they wanted to make a public statement about how frustrated they were over what Apple was deciding to do. So good for Apple for making the right choice and bringing Bitcoin apps back into their store. But obviously for some people it was too little and too way too late uh, for them to do that. But we were recommending blockchain.info and you can go and get the app at blockchain.com. They're the same company, just two different sites. The blockchain.com is like a real easy site to kind of zero in. And That's get where they've the got app. their blog yeah. and a couple other things. And you can easily set up a, a new wallet there through their app. So go and check that out if you haven't yet got, uh, gotten your Bitcoin wallet. You can do it for free through blockchain, blockchain.com. Go and grab it up. Let's continue here. You can take control of the latest on the Market Basket saga still to come here on Free Talk Live as we continue uh, with Luke. He's calling from Vietnam. You're on Free Talk Live, Luke. Luke in Vietnam. Oh, hi. How are you? Hey, we are great, and you are on yeah, the air. Can you go hear ahead. Me? Yep, you're on the air. Go ahead. Okay, I want I want to talk about Tor because you're talking about uh, Tor earlier. Yes. Um, the problem with Tor is that anyone can run an exit node, mm-hmm. and the problem with most people is that in their browsers, they have too many people they trust or too many certificates, and only one CA needs to be hacked. And then someone running an exit node can impersonate to be any legitimate website, and um, it's it's insecure because of that. So you have to be very careful. Mm. I, as well as installing Tor, you have to keep a site authorities you trust. You have to keep what you just cut out. You said as well as installing websites you use. Luke, you said instead of inst- or you said you cut out after uh, the, the installing CA, Tor. The CA certificate. Okay, you have to be very careful what certificate authorities you install in your web browser when you Mm. use Tor because anyone can run an exit node, and that means people who have IT skills can be watching what connections uh, people on the Tor network are making out through Mm. their internet connection when they share their internet connection to Tor users by running an exit node. So... uh, the, the key rule of using Tor is never log into any website that is not a secure HTTPS connection. Oh. That's the most important uh, advice for That's using if Tor you're going, just to be in. clear with what you're saying. The Tor anonymizing system allows you to do two things. You can connect to hidden services, which are only available on Tor, and you can also connect to the regular Internet. The exit nodes you're talking about are the ways that people connect to the regular Internet through Tor to try to cloak themselves when going to regular Internet sites. You're saying if you're connecting to a regular Internet site, make sure it's an HTTPS, which stands the S stands for secure. You've probably noticed that in your browser uh, in, this, in the bar. The, you know the URL, and most area. websites have that in the uh, you know browser now. Many anyway. do, many do. Yeah, but it is worth keeping a lookout. And and it's certainly true that when you're using Tor, that, that, knowing a thing or two is important. Yeah. Go ahead. Luke. Yeah, you have to make as well as using HTTPS, you have to cut down the number of. Uh, CAs or certificate authorities you trust to make your connection secure because if just one of them gets hacked, and I think uh, Digicom or something like that recently was hacked, if just one of those CAs was hacked and a hacker's got a, a CA private certificate or private key, 
that means that they can pretend to be any legitimate website on the internet and grab your password. So yeah. uh, it's my advice to make sure that you keep an eye on what C have the absolute bare minimum number of uh, CA certificates in your web browser settings yeah. only for the websites you trust. Thanks for the uh, the advice. Now, do you feel like having heard the news that Tor may have been hacked? Uh, do, are you, is it something that you're going to stop using, or are you going to be more cautious? How are you um, handling it? Well, when I was in China in uh, 2009, 2010, the Great Firewall of China successfully blocked Tor. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Tor traffic can be identified by its fingerprint, and um, if they can block Tor, then, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's a secure system, as people say. I mean, you have to be very mindful of how it works. You have to know a thing or two, as you said. You have to understand that uh, there's different, different roles on the Tor network, and you have to be... You should never. You should assume that someone is listening to your outgoing traffic, uh, because of the the exit. Not all exit nodes are secure. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a real geek and uh, you actually have a another geek friend, you can actually hard code Tor to use certain exit nodes that you trust in countries that you trust. Interesting. But um, that's go and also if you are in China or traveling abroad, you can actually use an en an entry node that you trust as well or a, a, a proxy. So uh, Tor on by itself, with no knowledge of how it works, is going to get you into trouble. Embassies have had their email, all their emails read just for uh, you know using basic uh, insecure authentication on the hmm. top three, downloading their accounts. A guy in Germany who ran an exit node got arrested for child pornography, which he didn't do. That someone else on the Tor network yeah. uh, did. That's pretty so, scary. And I've heard that that's happened more than once, where people will be doing questionable things with Tor on these exit nodes on this, you know, the regular internet. And so the person who is the exit node is the one who's making all those connections. Therefore, when the police investigate, they find that IP address. They come to that person's house and they say, well, all these requests for child pornography came from your IP address, so it must be you. You're under arrest. And the guy's like, what? What? Uh, I run a Tor exit node. Maybe it was coming from that. Too bad. It's your computer. Your name's on the account. You're under arrest. And that's pretty scary stuff. Yeah, even more scary is uh, the log. Back in the days when you had um, uh, Shazar and uh, the, the police were running a system called Log P2P, and if someone uh, renamed a picture file of, let's say, a motorbike that you liked or a movie that you wanted to download, uh, and uh, you know renamed a, a, a prohibited item to something that you wanted to download, and you downloaded it, you could be arrested because. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they were getting lots of false positives with that back in the day. And they used all those false positives to, um, to justify the internet censorship regime in Australia. Luke, which, of course, doesn't stop child pornography because of the, the Tor project. So, Of course not. Yeah. Luke, hey, good information, man. I th appreciate it. I think you made it kind of easy to understand. I didn't really feel lost at any point. When you were talking to me, Daryl, were you able to follow uh, Luke's call? Uh, somewhat, but you know, a, a little bit of the technical details I got a little lost on. But. Thanks for the call, Luke. I appreciate hearing from you. Anytime you're lost, feel free to just, you know, jump in with a question. Uh, you know, don't, if you're getting lost, it might mean that listeners out there are getting lost. And I don't want anybody to feel like, you know, we're talking over anyone's head. Uh, basically, what Luke was saying was, you know, use the HTTPS, which is stands for secure when you're connecting to regular internet sites through Tor. Uh, and, you know, be cautious. I mean, there's there's things that you should know about Tor. Like, I think they recommend you turn JavaScript off, I believe, generally, because the JavaScript in the browser could somehow reveal your identity. That's always been a, one of the major issues with Tor. So a little bit of research goes a long way. And uh, there is a learning curve involved. Of course, now maybe people aren't even going to bother to research because maybe it's been compromised, the Tor network. The toll-free number here is 855 The latest coming up on the Market Basket Controversy. Daryl has that story and will manage to get your call in if you make it right now. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and this is Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I 
recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love Liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, health care, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Hey folks, this is Larry Crisp for BabyBoomerBackupPlan.com. I'm sure you know this economy sucks we all realize that the american economy is tremendously unstable right now and will likely get much worse there's monumental debt government bailouts stock and real estate bubbles that are primed to pop at any moment which can flush away most or all of your retirement savings this type of movement has enormous consequences virtually zero sectors of the economy are hiring and workforce participation is at record lows financial trouble is right here at our doorstep but if you move right now and develop a backup plan immediately this could be the most profitable time of your life proportionately more millionaires were created during the great depression than at any time in our history get my free report at babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789 for my free report 888-507-8789 and prepare to profit as history repeats itself are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Just dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. You can join us online, and you can just go to freetalklive.com. Create the content there on the site. You submit stuff that you find online, and then other listeners can vote on it, vote it up or down, 
whether you like or dislike it. And then ultimately, we can visit our own website. The host of the show will go to our own site and we'll see what you think is interesting. It's a Reddit-based system. It's free to use. You just need a free Reddit account and a Free Talk Live account. You link the two together in a very short process. It's totally free at freetalklive.com. Go there and get creative. And if you want to help support the show, please become an amplifier today at amp.freetalklive.com. The AMP program actually allows you to get behind the show for five bucks a month to help us get the ideas of freedom into more people's ears around the world. So if you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, you like the fact we're on hundred uh, over 150 radio stations coast to coast, you want us to get on 300 stations, just send some money into the AMP program. We'll use it to reach out to stations. We'll also use it to advertise online, bring in new internet listeners. We'll use it to bring new satellites online around the world to bring international listeners on board. People who can't have, don't have internet or they have very, very slow internet. Uh, it, a free-to-air satellite works very well for those folks. So go to amp.freetalklive.com and get perks like access to the AMP Only call-in lines, the AMP Only podcast, the AMP Only Facebook group, and more. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. Coming up, the latest on the Market Basket Saga. Daryl has that story. It's an uh, just an embattled uh, company between two sides of a family. They have been struggling for power in this company. One uh, side recently got control. They ousted a long beloved CEO, and now almost the entire company is protesting in favor of getting the CEO back. We'll give you the latest in that development here. James is on the line first in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. Hi, Daryl. Hello. Uh, when you go on your bus tour for Liberty, I sure hope you do come to Phoenix, by the way. But uh, if and when people you do go on your road trip, when people ask you where do you live, what are you going to say? Well, I will be living in the not a bus when I do take the trip between March and June. Uh, I, I'm so not sure gonna, what not you are getting New at. Hampshire. You're not going to say New Hampshire. You're well, I, I'm currently in domiciled in New Hampshire. Okay, because, I mean, I just want to get this straight, because you uh, spent an entire hour about a trial you're going to – you're taking the state to trial of New Hampshire, that is. Over no, what? they took me well, to court. Well, they're accusing you of something that – of living in New Hampshire and not paying your car registration and buying a license, which would cost you, uh, if analogous me – a whopping about 175 bucks, and the license will be good. My license, just like yours, is good till it may as well be the next century because it's good forever. And it's almost good for indefinite. And it cost me 25 bucks. It cost me 150 bucks to register my ride. So you're going to take make the you're going to waste the good people of Keene's taxes uh, with a judge that has to be paid and a bailiff and all those buildings that you're going to go in have to be paid for because you're refusing to – you're a minister, by the way, so you should know that uh, you should not bear a false witness and just be straight up with a judge. Yeah, Your Honor, I live in Keene, and I'll give you the 150 bucks. Can I go home now? Why well, can't you just do that? There's a difference between being an inhabitant and a resident. They are no, alleging that I'm a resident, which I am not. Uh, I do not claim residency. And you're skirting taxes, and somebody narked on you. I, I think that's a unit list, by the way. But maybe somebody's upset that they know that you've been living in Keene for a long time now, and you're benefiting from other people's taxes for a lot of things that you drive on, like called roads. Yeah, Why I I, I purchase bucks? fuel. Leave the judge and the bailiff and everybody else alone, and, pay, and just pay your money. I, for, I purchase fuel, and that Seriously. goes towards paving the roads. You know, James, uh, why don't you kiss that boot a little bit more? Thanks for the call. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, look, they are the ones wasting your time, Daryl. The government, judge, the cops, the prosecutors, you're not wasting their time. They're the ones who came after you with right. a threat. They told you... You will come to our courtroom, or we'll have you kidnapped, and we'll force you to come to the courtroom. Right. That's what happens whenever you get an arraignment. You get a complaint from a police officer with an arraignment date on it. There's an in, in, uh, implied to, you know, or indirect threat that says— Either you, will, you give us money. We're, yeah. we're extorting money from you, 
or you can come beg us to not extort money from you. You can go to a trial where you'll have a very small chance of having some sort of success in court and not have to pay the fine or pay as much of the fine, ultimately. Uh, and uh, that's not your fault, Daryl. It's not You are not to be blamed for wasting the government's time or the other taxpayers' time. If the government goons around here in Keene, New Hampshire, wanted to have less time wasted, they could just stop arresting activists. And they knew, they know that activists will take them to court. Sure. They know they that. Course. And because that's part we of the stand point. out in front of the court, that's part handing of what out they're doing. literature that, that says don't take their plea. That's exactly what they're doing, uh, Daryl. They want to make an example out of you. They want to turn you and me into examples for the other activists. Like, look, this is what happens when you challenge the state. This is what we will do to you. This is what we will bring upon you. It shall be no mercy. And they they don't want people to come here. They think that if uh, they crack down on people like you and me, that that's going to dissuade people from coming here. They are very scared of the idea of you, the listener who cares about freedom, not James, uh, but you, the listener who cares about freedom, coming to New Hampshire and getting active because they know that right now it's just a few of us that are really kind of a, you know, a wrench in, this, in the system, in the works of the system. But if we have a bunch of people who are challenging parking tickets and stupid charges like you were you know, challenging, then that's just going to load up the system with, uh, with undesirable cases. And people who are bootlickers like uh, James will blame us for it. It's happened for years. Right. There was a time when the uh, the trespass of 12 were arrested in uh, at the jail, and they had to call in cops from all around the area. They brought in all the Keene police who were on duty. They brought in the Swansea cop. They brought in the Marlboro cop. They brought in one of the state police. They brought in, I think, a couple of the sheriffs and some guards from the jail. They had 13 members of the police from various different jurisdictions there to arrest 12 individuals. And so they had to bring in all they could to outnumber us because numbers are very, right. very important. They wouldn't have been able to do that if we had 50 people instead of 12. Right. And But what happened was when we got arrested, there was some news about the arrest later on. And in that news story, the newspaper was reporting it as though, look what these darn free staters did. They made it so our police were off the streets. There was an accident in Keene, and they had to call in the, uh, one of the other Marlboro cops, which is the town just to the east of Keene. They had to call in one of the Marlboro cops because the activists made the police all come out to the jail they all just had to come out to the jail to deal with these activists who were doing what um we walked around the jail a couple times and we're in the parking lot getting ready to leave when the keen police showed up and immediately arrested us without any kind of without a warning they didn't even warn us to leave they just arrested us right away so oh the cops just had to go out and do that you guys forced their hand no they could have just simply left us alone and we would have left the jail at that point. And I am kind of curious what James meant when he said, I hope you do come to Phoenix. I, I wonder if that was some sort of uh, you know, passive aggressive threat. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he wants physical your autograph. Violence maybe against he wants, me if maybe, I do wind up making it to Phoenix. Maybe he just wants to give you a hug. You don't know. <laughs> I I I Maybe he's a really nice guy in person. Maybe I don't James, think so. Maybe James is just a character. Maybe James in Arizona is a character like Jimmy in Arizona. Maybe they're the same person. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But that. let's talk about Market sure. Basket yeah, real quick. Quick update. What's happening there? Well, there are a couple of things going on. On Wednesday, the executives, that being the board, told the employees you have until Monday to report to work or be fired. And uh -oh. earlier today, apparently a lot of the senior management, that being people that aren't store managers, but like the regional reps, yeah. somewhere between 50 and 70 of them received letters saying that they would not be getting paid and one of the supervisors who spoke to the Boston Globe said he received a letter that said, please note that you will not be receiving your August salary payment at this Whoa. time due to your ongoing failure to report to work and unwillingness to perform oh any God. services for the company. 
He said that he had tried to go to work, went around visiting stores, trying to keep up morale, and making sure that the employees stayed busy even though there was nothing on the shelves. So the employees have till Monday to go back to work. Monday's the deadline. Job fair next week, Monday, Tuesday for employees, Wednesday open to the public. If you're looking for work in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Maine, uh, this might be a good opportunity for you. The toll-free number tomorrow will give it to you then. The FBI has successfully executed a raid on the Visa Corporation, exposing what could be the largest credit card scam in U.S. history. According to authorities, the Visa Syndicate for years fooled millions of Americans by issuing convincing-looking credit cards carefully designed to dupe consumers into spending far more money than they had. Investigators believe the fraudulent corporation also lured victims in with enticing rewards programs and free gifts, thereby trapping them in a spiral of debt they could never hope to repay. According to the results of a groundbreaking new study, 96% of humans would rather be a singing, dancing, animatronic bear. The study finds that a great majority of people on the planet would prefer to trade in their regular lives for one in which they sat on a plastic log, strummed a banjo, and sang songs on a stage with all their goofy bear friends. Respondents also stated that not being a sentient human being with feelings of doubt, sadness, and pain contributed to the decision. This is the Onion News Network. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 1st, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.38 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,286 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $591. Antiwar.com reports, after long-standing denials, the CIA has finally admitted that its personnel improperly accessed computers belonging to the Senate Intelligence Committee to spy on the details of a report they were compiling on the CIA's use of torture. Improperly accessed in the case means illegally hacked, and Senator Dianne Feinstein from California dubbed the spying a violation of the understanding the committee had with the CIA as well as a violation of constitutional separation of powers. CIA director John Brennan, who publicly denied that any such spying took place as recently as March, has now issued an apology to the committee for misleading them on the issue. The Justice Department, as always, is shrugging off the news of executive branch power abuse, insisting they would not conduct any criminal investigation over the matter. The 